ISC Sports Network proudly presents the Pete and Alice Die Junior Invitational live from Crooked Stick Golf Club. Final round coverage starts now. From one of the finest golf courses in this country, a place that is steeped in tradition that has brought us moments like John Daly bursting onto the golfing scene in 1991, a pair of BMW championship wins, a victorious U.S. effort in the Solheim Cup in 2005. We welcome you to what is still a new tradition on the north side of Indianapolis from the house that Pete and Alice built, Crooked Stick Golf Club in Carmel. We welcome you to the third playing of the Pete and Alice Die Junior Invitational. Thank you so much for joining us on the ISC Sports Network and those of you joining us as well on Comcast 81 in Indiana and Comcast 900 in Michigan. My name is Greg Rakestraw, and I am thrilled to be joined by, simply put, one of the top college golf riders in the country. That is Lance Ringler, who happens to call Indiana home as well. And if you have watched our coverage over the course of the last couple of years, well, you are in for a treat. A, Lance is really good at his job, but B, we have also added whole coverage on hole number 17. So we will see the final two holes, although for all but a couple of groups, they won't be the final two holes today. And that is because of weather issues a day ago. We had approximately a three hour delay yesterday for storms, for lightning, and not everyone could complete their second round a day ago. In fact, only eight of the 22 threesomes got 36 holes in yesterday. It took about an hour 45 to complete the second round this morning. And now knowing there are travel considerations for many members of this field, as in some folks have flights to catch later today at Indianapolis International Airport. We will have a shotgun start. So there will be 18 groups teeing off on 18 different holes. In fact, it is starting as we speak here on 18. Before we get our first shots of this final round, Lance, it is great to have you with us. I know you catting this event a couple of years ago. Just your thoughts on what we're going to see here this afternoon. Well, I can tell you when I caddied in this event, 36 holes on in one day, it was hot, and uh, that was a, 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 a good test for me. But uh, I'm really excited to be here. I'm, I'm happy the weather is uh, it's kind of cool. It's, it feels good out, and I think that uh, the, the rain softened up the course. From the way I understand, it was playing very difficult yesterday, and uh, excited to see how much different it may play today with a little bit of moisture on the ground. Um, but the one thing that this reminds me of, Greg, is this reminds me of, of, a, of a college tournament because a lot of college tournaments are played 36 holes and then 18 holes shotgun start because travel considerations, teams have to get back to campus and, and get back to school. So these kids are getting a real good feel of what the next level is going to be like with this event today. So what you are seeing is players teeing off on the 18th green. In the 18th for the young ladies is playing at 403 yards for the Young men, it'll be 457 yards. In total, throughout 18 holes, there's about a 900-yard difference in terms of what this layout is for the boys. It's 72-79 in terms of the total yardage. For the ladies, it is just a yard shy of 6,400, 6,399 to be precise. What are the swing thoughts that these players need to be having here on this 18th hole from the tee box? Well, th this this tee shot it's all about picking out the right line you have to keep make sure you you have the right line off the tee it's a little deceiving when you're standing back there of how much you can actually take off the corner and uh you have to really have a good line and it feels like you're hitting it way left and when you get out there it's actually not way left but it looks like it when you're hitting off the tee shot here's anna ritter from new albany ohio young lady part of four consecutive high school state championships in her days at New Albany High School. She's got a high school teammate that is playing in this event as well. She also has the former longtime Ohio State golf coach caddying for her, Therese Hessian. Who is from this area, correct? correct? Yes. And clearly local knowledge helped absolutely split the fairway on what is her first swing of this round. Again, the shotgun starts at the high school golf level, college golf level are somewhat common. You have to kind of resort to them at an event like this. How does that change the mindset for these golfers, if at all, getting this final round underway? You know, I don't think it changes it a lot. It's just a matter of where you're starting on the golf course and, and, and being able to pick up your game plan from that point and, and just get just get, get going. You know, some, some people might start on a hole they're more comfortable with, and it just all depends on where you're actually starting. 
All right, so with that, let's show you the leaderboard. And again, the first several groups that you are going to see will be the girls' groups today. In, in previous years, those have been alternated. But again, because of necessity being the mother of invention, when you have to come back and finish your round, Taylor Kehoe is currently our only player that is under par on either the girls' or boys' side. Again, she is going to play at the University of Alabama. She is Canadian and Canada. Australia, as well as Mexico, are represented in this field. Our winner from last year in Lee Chen currently is tied for third at four over par. She just completed her sophomore year of high school in Irvine, California. And Macy Pate that joins her at four over. Macy fired a 57 in a competitive round, her high school conference championship in the state of North Carolina back in October. A quick check of the boys' leaderboard, and again, this will change dramatically by the time we see the guys roll through a couple of hours from now. Jay Mendel and Jack Roberts. We mentioned Mexico representative. That's Eduardo Derbez Torres. He had a two, an eagle, on the 11th hole during his first round yesterday. Caden Pope, Jackson Finney, Camden Smith, all two shots back. And again, it's the, the yardage difference is big here in terms of what the girls are swinging, what the guys are. We saw this a couple of years ago where the scores for the girls were actually a little bit better than, than the guy scores were because that added distance. Yeah, 6,400 is no joke for the girls, especially today with a little bit, it's going to be softer. But, yeah, it, it's uh, the length is something that you almost can't make them long enough anymore for these kids. They, they hit the ball so far. The equipment's so good. And it's they're, they're all athletes. They, they, they just they play with no fear, and they get after it. You will oftentimes see whether it's on the player themselves or their caddy. We'll tell you about the various college commitments, but if you simply look on your screen, you can figure out where the player is heading. Anna, even though she is from the Columbus, Ohio area, is going to play golf at the University of Illinois. Tell us about the Illini program on the women's side. Yeah, the, the women's side, I think, benefited a lot from the momentum the men's program started, well, I don't know, 15 years ago. I can't even tell you how many Big Ten championships in a row Mike Small and the Illinois men's program won, but I think – that the women's program really benefited from that and was able to pick up on that momentum. And, and here recently, the last three, four years, uh, Renee Sloan, used to be Renee Heiken, was, a, was an All-American player at Illinois. Uh, she's been the head coach now for many, many years, and I believe she's turned that program into a top 30, top 40 program on the women's side. And, and just this week, Greg, they uh, opened up a new golf course over at the University of Illinois, and they now have their own facility. They, they have one of the best practice facilities in all of college golf, and they, now they have a golf course. So uh, that program is definitely one that is uh, is big time in college golf. And, of course, only one that's really less than two hours away from you and I are seated right now here on the north side of Indianapolis over in Champaign-Urbana. Again, this trio of golfers that we're seeing. And we are seeing players that are, again, trying to play catch-up but have a legitimate chance of winning this tournament right off the jump. In years gone by, we've kind of seen – Players that are playing their ninth hole and they would kind of finish on the front nine. But again, because of the change in format, necessitated by the weather conditions, we are seeing players really kind of kind of four through ten in the leaderboard here. And this is our defending champion. Won this event as a 15-year-old a year ago. Her approach on 18. Back, pin location. It's like Lee's played here before. Oh my goodness, nearly hit the flag stick. Frankly, unlucky that that ball continued to roll, but still from that position, in theory, easy to get that one up and in for a par and par on this hole is always a fantastic score. For sure, par on 18 at Crooked Stick. I think we'd all take that. <laughs> Just showed you a little bit of how the, the green is playing. Obviously, she was hitting it out of the rough, so she's not gonna be able to spin the ball very much, but that ball landed in the front third of the green. Didn't even think about slowing down until it got, you know, well past the hole and into the into the rough. My partner referenced the weather conditions. Clearly, you can see that players are wearing jackets. Temperatures today: high 60s, low 70s. Supposed to be overcast the entirety of the day. There is a slight chance of rain, but thunderstorms not in the forecast. This one headed for the left edge of the green and will be shy of the green. And that is going to be a very tricky chip from that position. Samantha Olson, player on your screen, has completed her sophomore year of high school, native of Phoenix, Arizona. 
Here's Anna Ritter. Anna had back-to-back -to -back top tens last year at the Dana Incorporated Junior Open and the DA Points Junior Open as well. She was in this event a year ago. Again, trying to roll this from the front of the green to the back. Kind of be in between the kind of two ridges on this green. And again, the goal from there, a two putt, take your four and go on to hole number one. But for her, what will be hole number two of the day? Let's give you the scores as we speak. Anna Ritter on your screen currently at seven over. A couple of consistent rounds, 76 and 75. Over the course of her two completed rounds, Samantha Olson and Lee Chen currently tied for fourth, or third, excuse me. Those two are at plus four. So you are seeing, again, if we were doing this more conventional tournament style, this would be the next to last group. These are the players that are four, five, and six in what is a 33-player field. And you will hear me throw out numbers in terms of AJGA rankings and all kind of Division I college commitments throughout the course of this event. But Lance, simply put, if I asked you to describe the quality of this field from both a girls and boys perspective, where do you begin? Very strong. <laughs> uh, there's only 33 players on, 33 boys, 33 girls, but I, I, would, I would say all, every one of them is a college player. Um, you know, we have, if we were talking football, basketball, we have a lot of five stars here, <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, and quite a few coaches here. The, there's about, I believe, a dozen or so 2024 kids that have not committed or still being recruited, and that's why we see some of the big name. We uh, Just over on the range right now, you know, Clemson's here, Arizona. Uh, some schools have come a long way because we have some players here that are, are big-time players and not committed. And uh, being recruited very highly. Let's kind of get to this off the top. Obviously, there has been such upheaval in college athletics because of name, image, and likeness. You and I both, when we're not thinking about golf, we're thinking about basketball a good deal of time as well. We have seen how late the commitments have now become in that sport. Has that trickled over to golf at this point yet? Um, it's getting there. I think there's another, the COVID year has had a lot sure. to do with that as well because players are – this level of player is still getting recruited very highly, but as we, we go down the ranks in junior golf, some of those players are not getting recruited because there's so many kids that have had an extra year. But um, th there's some of that in college golf, not as much, obviously, as we see at the basketballs and footballs. Samantha Olson. It's about as well as you can hit that. Now what will the result be? Will she catch that final slope? Yes, she will judged it absolutely perfectly and oh my goodness that is a second shot and a third shot that flirted with going in in the first group of the day and again this is not your normal first group this is a group that's fighting for a championship here and this whole location is going to be real interesting because of the accessibility to it as we see they're running the ball up they're they're hitting shots that are going to we're going to see a lot of shots all, we, we might see one go in greg I thought two of three were yeah. going to go in. We so might see far. one go in today for a two, just from from where it's at and how they how they're playing the shot. Lee Chen off the green. She won the Arizona Silver Bell in December. Won the Mariah Stackhouse Girls Invitational in February. Her AJGA ranking right now, fourth. Well, that one's not going in, but left herself a little bit of work for a par putt. But again, four is a good score on every hole in this golf course, especially this one. It'll be Ritter who is away now. What's her swing thought here? What, what's kind of the aim and point she's looking for here? She's probably she's probably more concerned with speed right now, being the first hole of the day. She's probably more concerned with just making sure she has the right distance and, and 
and giving it a good chance. Young lady, second team all state in high school golf in the state of Ohio this year. Again, a birdie putt. Couldn't have dialed the speed up any better. Got it perfect. Now an awfully good chance at birdie here for Olsen. Olsen won the Bryce Mulder Invitational in Scottsdale a couple of months ago. At this level of golf, this is the first time she has played out of Arizona this year. This would be, what, a January day in Arizona? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Just pulled it left. There are a few times where you kind of feel disappointed from missing a putt of that length, but knowing that was for four for her. So it's an opening yeah. five for Olsen. Now par putts. So Olsen drops a shot. Olsen momentarily drops out of a tie for third. So right now three shots worth of space between Olsen and Chen in this group and Ritter. So Olsen now five over for the tournament with 17 holes to play. Sun trying to fight through for the first time today. There's your par. Lee and even par 72 in her first round yesterday. Four over 76 in round number two for our defending champion. And this is just the third playing of this event. Here's Ritter. And Ritter a solid par. So two pars and a bogey. Well done by our group that's currently sitting. Spots four, five, and six on the leaderboard. So the next trio of golfers that will come through the 18th. Terry Hollenbaugh and Shannon Ritter, high school teammates. Madison DeBaggio from Homestead High School. He's going to play at the University of Iowa. And Sophie Lindner. She'll be easy to spot. She's wearing the Ole Miss cap today. You can figure out where she's going to be playing her exactly. college golf in a year. She's actually a high school senior to be. Madison and Carey of this group. And this is Madison on the tee. They'll be conference rivals coming up. Carey's going to stay close and will play at Ohio State. Madison, who finished fourth in the IHSAA Girls Golf State Finals at Prairie View down the road in October. She is off the tee. This is Sophie Linder. Heard a lot of good things about Madison. She might have been a, she might have been a player who kind of snuck under the radar a little bit. I think her, her ceiling's really high from what I've been told by a lot of people who, who know what they're talking about. By the way, you're amongst those people, by the <laughs> way. Lindner. You see the end result of what certainly appeared to be a solid-looking swing, and yeah. that thing landing in the short grass will confirm that. Again, for again those that follow college golf and junior golf, I think they are familiar with your work. But for those that do not, tell us what you do with Golf Week. So I've been with Golf Week for two decades now and uh, I pretty much turned into the college golf analyst, the college golf expert. I've been covering college golf. I've been to the last 23 NCAA championships for both the men and women, uh, several of the top junior tournaments over the years, and just kind of found my way as being the college golf guy. <laughs> I mean, I have a couple of coaches call me Mr. Ma or the mayor of college golf and <laughs> things like that. But it's 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 a lot of a lot of fun, Greg. I mean, it's just a it's something that doesn't get a lot of attention sometimes. And when you're the only one doing it, everybody seems to point your way. And and I've really enjoyed it and look forward to doing it for many more years. 
We're welcoming aboard a sponsor for the first time on our coverage here at the uh, Pete and Alice Die Junior Invitational here on the ISC Sports Network. That is the good folks at On Demand Staffing, supporting major clients like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the Lucas Oil Stadium. On Demand Staffing is your go-to partner when you need staffing help. When you need it, where you need it, call On Demand. Go to ondemandstaffing.jobs. Visit one of their Indianapolis offices located on either West Washington Street or the corner of 86th Street and Michigan Road. And we will see one of the uh, key pieces of on-demand staffing on the bag for one of our competitors coming up a little bit later today. The player would be one Michaela Headley from here in Carmel, a high school junior to be that we'll see a few groups from now. Let's take a look at what happened on 17 for this group. Here's DeBaggia's tee shot. In for the young ladies. 155 is what you're looking at from the tee box. A very awkward position for DeBaggia to be in, but yet the opposite of an awkward shift. That is absolutely that's, fantastic. Yeah, that's pretty much perfect. So DeBaggia with a three on 17. Given where that tee shot landed, you will take that with a smile on your face. Here's Linder. And this was her second. Maybe her third, given where she yeah. dropped it, obviously. Yeah, 17 is a difficult hole if you miss the green. There's not a lot of places that's an easy up and down. It really challenges your short game. And again, what used to be a monster of a sand trap has now become a watered hazard that you saw her playing next to. Roll that putt home in. We'll catch you with catch up with Hollenbaugh in a moment. DeBaggio with a par, and you saw all three of her shots. For Lindner, unfortunately, a triple is what she recorded on the 17th. Gary Hollenball walked away with a par, by the way, on that 17th hole. We didn't have a chance to show you her shots. I believe this is Carrie right here. Look for this ball to land in that front third again. And find its way rolling right back to the cup. for dead middle. Now will it get over that second ridge? The answer is no. But again, any ball within 20 or 25 feet of the, of the hole here, you take it and walk away. Especially knowing that this is the second hole of the final round for this trio. Here's Linder. Going flag hunting after that triple on 17. Again, does not get the benefit of the roll off of that slope, but it's a pretty direct putt from that angle for a potential birdie. Linder had back-to-back -to -back top 10s in the Sergio Garcia and Dustin Johnson Jr. events in the month of March. And for those that don't follow junior golf, you are seeing more and more pro players have their own junior event. That's Wonderful to see. Yeah, a lot of those events are part of the AJGA circuit. Here's DeBaggio. So three outstanding tee shots here on 18 for this group. And she, too, is going to attack this from the right side of the green. Had it dialed in perfectly. Again, won't get that roll, so... You're going to have a couple of putts so they can go to school off each mm -hmm. other in this one. Don't exactly have to zoom the camera shot out very much to find those three golf balls on the green. But you are looking at nothing but birdie putts for this trio. We referenced Abaja being from Homestead High School. Her team finished as the 
runner-up in the state competition at the Girls Golf State Finals in October. And again, for those of you outside of the state of Indiana, Girls Golf is played in the fall, and they wrap kind of the first weekend in October. The boys' event is going on as we speak. And I think what is really cool, we have two Indiana players who are able to play this event in between rounds of the state tournament. Ryan Ford of Cathedral High School, Aiden Gutierrez of Valparaiso High School. Our state tournament, and I say our because Lance is a native Hoosier much like myself, um, sectional, regional, then state championship. For the boys, this event settles in nicely between the sectional finals and the regional finals, which take place on Thursday. So we see a couple of the two players of the 33-player field on the boys' side are guys that will get a day off or get a practice round in tomorrow and then go join their high school teammates. And that's, frankly, at this level, not all that common. I, I like the, the, the ability for these players to be able to play both events like this and play with their high school classmates. Yeah, some states are, are tricky uh, when it comes to high school golf and outside competition. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it, it's good that they're able to do it, allowed to do it, and, and figure out a way to, to play because you definitely don't – it would be terrible to be able to play in this event but not be able to play in this event, right? I mean, this is an event you want to play in, and, and uh, it's just getting better and better each year. I don't know how they can just keep it at 66 players. They could, they could, they could explode this to 150 if they wanted. You will learn in about four <laughs> and a half hours that we run out of things to talk about, even in five hours is the exactly. reason why. This is a very select field. So this is Holland Ball that is away. And imagine having your high school golf team have a player going to Illinois and a player going to Ohio State in the same class. It's part of the reason why New Albany High School has won four consecutive girls golf state championships. And this is Therese Hessian, the Ohio State coach, longtime Hall of Fame coach and Buckeye, former Hoosier. Carey shot a 60 in a round last fall. She finished in the top 11 all four years of the high school state tournament. She won three AJGA events last year. If you wonder why she played that much break, it's called local knowledge. Didn't hit it, but about as good as you could do from that spot. Should really benefit the next two, seeing that one roll. All right, I'll go back to your caddy experience. Similar level of break, from a little closer to the hill, or does that flatten it out a little I, bit? I think this one this won't be quite as much, I don't believe. Madison here won the Dane Incorporated Junior Open last summer. Finished third at the Otter Creek AJG event last June. Madison coming off a three over 75 in round number two. That's tied for second best in the field. It was warm and windy yesterday, opposite today. Birdie putt here. And again, not enough break. Absolutely nailed the distance, just not enough break. And folks, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're tuning in for birdie putts, I'm not sure how many you're going to see today. We just don't see that many on 18. It's like this is a hole that has been used as a finishing hole for a major championship yeah, or something. Maybe. And almost 31 years removed from John Daly. Bursting onto the golf scene here in August of 1991. His son played this event the last two years. He's now aged out of it, playing at the University of Arkansas. Linder. Trying to get one back from a triple on the last hole. And <clears throat> those are three outstanding bits. Yep.
So a trio of fours go on the board for this group. These are kind of golfers seven, eight, nine, if you will, on the leaderboard here. Two groups down, 20 more to go to come through our 18th green. And let's go back to the tee box now on 18. So this being the third group to come through today. Allie Black, Kate Barber, Julia Meismer, the trio of players. Well, so far, finding the fairway for this group has not been a problem from 405 yards away. Allie through two holes, two under. Good start. Kate Barber, even par, through two holes today. 12 over for the tournament. I hope I didn't just get the broadcaster jinx. Yeah. Found that one. So apparently that applies in golf, too, apparently. Yes, I'm sorry maybe. about that. I apologize. That's on me. Just like as a caddy, you always say, get to this point, not, hey, don't leave it short, right? <laughs> yeah, stay away from those lines. Yeah, I, I, I just, like I said earlier, this the, the tee shot here is, it, it's it's not a difficult hole, but it's, it's a difficult line because you really, it, it's, I played golf one time with Steve Smyers, architect actually did the IU course and he talked a lot about one of the most difficult things for a golfer is to hit it away from the hole like his their line almost feels like Greg that you're hitting it further left than what the fairway even goes and that's a really hard discipline to do and that's the way this tee shot sets up and what makes this hole so difficult. Meismer two over through her first two holes of the day. Well I believe that stayed up. Right, rough, yeah. So you'll have the difficulty of the uh, lush rough, and again, it is kept that way to make this a championship golf course. But again, as Lance and I can tell you, the rough like this at most courses is to some degree like this because of the rain that we get in April and May around here. So let's go back to this group's last hole. We're picking up these golfers on 17 today. An outstanding tee shot. Again, like most peat die greens, it's almost three different greens in one complex, and I, where the whole positioning goes completely changes what your shot looks like. People often talked about peat die used to bury elephants in his greens. <laughs> and that's what we see a lot of when we see a peat die golf course. Well, an unfortunate miss there. Like we said, Meismer two over through two holes today. She finished up on 17 with that offering. And a lot of green that, frankly, for these golfers won't come into play with this front pin position today. And these pin positions all had to be changed in the span of about 30 minutes in between rounds, which they were. Certainly a quality chip there. So the tap in par. Now let's see this effort here. This one left short. But if I'm doing the math properly, this might be a pretty good golf shot you're about to see here, folks. But I was thinking. And that's how you go two under on your first two holes is chip in when you leave it short of the green. I'm not sure I know golf. I can do math yes. and kind of thought that was coming. So I was wondering where the close shot was, but <laughs> we knew it had to be a chip in. Still a two. As we would say in baseball, line drive and the box score. You don't need to tell people about missing the green. That's simply a, that's simply a birdie.
Kate Barber. Kate will be a high school sophomore. So obviously, she's in the drink, so she'll be hitting her third here. She is from Savannah, Georgia. Her first two rounds, 77 and 79. Finished seventh in the Sam Burns Classic last month. Finished fifth in the Billy Horschel Junior event in October. What was that you were saying about PGA Tour names? Uh huh. <laughs> you'll notice there's folks, a lot of them. You'll notice a trend. So still some work left to do here for the soon-to-be high school sophomore. There are not many days in Savannah, Georgia, like this. Again, you got to go back to November, December, maybe, to get similar weather conditions to what we have today. This is Allie Black. Again, from Austin, Texas, but will play at the University of Virginia. Led her high school golf team at Westlake High School in Texas to a third place finish in the Texas State Tournament. You don't see many Texas juniors making it that far out of state. There's so many good golf programs in the state of Texas. Here's her approach. And she'll find the back of the green now. Will she, nicely. Get, will she get the proper oh, yeah. kick? Well, we are in Carmel. It'll take a roundabout. <laughs> until about a 15-foot effort. Some of the jokes are for the locals on the broadcast, I by get the it. way. I get that I one. knew you did. I get it. That's a good one. Folks, if you're watching from out of state, come to Hamilton <laughs> County, you'll get you'll get the joke much better. If you're from Indiana, you'll get it. So here's Meisner, and again, Meisner, while missed the fairway, most importantly, stayed dry. This is her second. She won the Kansas City Junior last July. She was one of the many players on both the boys and the girls side that played the Junior Am a year ago. Meisner will play at the University of Arizona. Again, of the players that have made a college golf commitment, all of them have committed to a Division I university that are playing in this field. And that one will not yeah. be in the bunker, but it will be a very difficult chip from that position. That is on the down slope and going to be very difficult. When you when you think of, of a peat die course, you've already made the joke about elephants in the green. What else comes to mind when describing a peat and Alice die design? But just the undulations around the greens, not only on the greens, but around the greens, as we can see here with the bunker, the way the, way the bunker is done. Obviously, railroad ties. And whenever you see railroad ties, you pretty much know where you're at. Um, he just gives you he gives you a lot of a lot of things to think about around the greens. This course dates back to the 1960s. Pete and Alice put this together. This was nothing but farmland in this area. Life has changed dramatically in these parts ever since. We're about a mile north from Indianapolis proper. Again, for those of you that are not familiar with the area, watching from outside of the state of Indiana. So here's Barber, and this is her fourth. How can it find the brakes? It does. Yeah, it's kind of the bad first cut. And that's certainly puttable from there, and we'll be putting for bogey from behind the hole. So Black continuing her hot run to start here, while Meisner and Barber scuffling a little bit. Greg Rakestraw, Lance Ringler with you here on the ISC Sports Network. We have seven cameras on 17 and 18 to bring you coverage that, frankly, 
doesn't usually exist at the junior golf level. That is all the idea of Tony Pancake, the wonderful director of golf here. The Worth Lines, Chris and Sally, Eddie White behind the scenes as well. Eddie was slated to join us in the broadcast today, but unfortunately, a little under the weather since I'm wearing pink in, in his honor today. I was looking forward to seeing Eddie today. <laughs> Everybody always looks forward to seeing Eddie. <laughs> I, I, my guess is Eddie's watching. Get well soon, my friend. We'll look forward to having you back Greg, on the broadcast next year. The degree of difficulty here is if this was – we were scoring this as judges in a gymnastic event. This is really difficult but to get this ball. If she can get this ball anywhere within 10, 15 feet would be incredible. Makes it even harder with the looming water in the background. And you kind of saw that one. Just a. This is one where you hate to do this, but you almost would be maybe better off playing the shot away from the hole just to make sure you get it out there and give yourself a putt. Those dreaded words in golf. You're still away. Good shot. Yep. Really solid. Now you've got that left for a five, so. A really once, good five. Once you hit that third shot, it is all damage control mode, and that's exactly what Meisner did. So for Barber, because of going in the drink off the tee, this is her fifth. Knew that was short the moment it left her club. Can you make it three birdies in a row? Very good opportunity to do so. Just a little left. Yeah, answer is no, but the birdie train stops. You're two under through three. You make the turn towards the front nine, all smiles if you're this soon to be Virginia Cavalier who taps it in. Well done. And that's going two under on the finishing three holes for yes. the golf course. So that's a, those aren't easy holes. And again, there's no such thing as an easy hole on a Pete Dye course. One tends to be about as playable. That's, again, the, the standard operating procedure for Pete's design. So one can be a birdie hole for you, too. I know for an average hack like me, I think I got a shot here on one. By the way, I want to compliment our first three groups. Pace of play has been really good. Makes our job easy. Meisner to salvage a five. That one nestles in. It's a really nice five. Yep. You don't celebrate fives, but that could have just as easily been a six or a seven. Barbara's going to give some shots back. She had got through the first two holes at level par. See activity about to get underway on the 18th tee box again as Barbara taps in for a six. She'll fall to 14 under for the tournament. She had momentarily been in about a four-way tie for 11th. We're kind of working our way back the leaderboard. We will catch the final group much later into our day. It'll be one of the last groups that we see. So the trio that is up next. Abby Shuddy of Goodyear, Arizona. 
Caitlin Schroeder, who played this event last year from Jacksonville, Florida. Aylin Stevens from Houston, Texas. I believe this is Caitlin's third year in a row. Direct. She played the year I caddied. And her father is Scott Schroeder, who is yep. the head men's golf coach at the University of North Florida. Well, that one, first one we kind of seen miss left, kind of get through the fairway off the tee box. Caitlin is committed to play at the University of Alabama next year. She'll be a high school senior in the Jacksonville, Florida area. This young Miss Stevens from Houston, Texas. He's going to play at Texas A&M. I still have to wrap my head around SEC Texas A&M. Of course, they're, not, they're going to be joined by wait, Oklahoma and Wait Texas. a couple more years. Right, exactly. <laughs> this young lady won the Nota Begay Junior Championship in 2020. And she, too, will... Just missed the fairway off to the left. So this would be Abby. Abby will be a high school senior this coming year. She will play at the University of Arkansas. Let's see if she has a drive worth yelling Woo Pig Suey about here. I like that chant like one time. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can't take it. I felt in golf announcer <laughs> voice it wasn't the, the right thing to do. <laughs> However, if you're going to have a drive worthy of that, you're right. that's the best drive both in terms of accuracy and as well as length that we have seen today. So let's now go back and show you how this trio did on 17. Here's Schroeder. Again, for the ladies, this is playing 155. Her putt for a two. It just didn't get there. But she'll take the three. Caitlin even through three holes today. Abby at one over through three, and clearly you can see potentially one of the issues there. So on the drop, this will be her third. And just yeah. hung up. Like we said, it's pretty lush carpet at this time of year around these parts. Miss Stevens on the tee. Has some work to do. This one will back off the green a little bit. That's a heck of a bogey save on the putt there. And then Stevens with her par. So two pars and a bogey for this trio on 17. Even she finished third in the Patrick Reed event last June. Won the Shreveport Open on the AJGA circuit last June. Her father played for the Houston Rockets. And is with an earshot of my voice as we speak. <laughs> Hello, Joe. <laughs> While this group sizes up their approach shots here on 18, we want to welcome to the broadcast position above the 18th green our most gracious of hosts, the director of golf here at Crook and Stick Golf Club. It is Tony Pancake. Good morning, my friend. How you doing? I'm doing great, Craig. Thanks for having me. And thanks for you guys uh, 
being out here and showcasing these players. They're they're unbelievable, and it's uh, fun to watch them. This is the first time, and, and obviously the restrictions were much lesser last year than they were in 2020, but uh, this is the most uh, pandemic-free event we've had in the three-year <laughs> history of the event. What have these last couple of days been like for you? You know, it's been uh, just really a pleasure to host these players. Uh, every year our field gets better. Uh, the word gets out about this tournament and, and this golf course, um, um, how much fun it is, how challenging it is, and uh, we just keep getting a better field. So um, it's been awesome. The stick is always tough. The stick is always beautiful. What's maybe different about the course this year, if there's anything you'd say different about it from the last couple of playings of this event? Yeah, great question. Um, on Saturday, we hosted a member event here, and a member who had been here uh, for 40 years said today was the best he's ever seen the course in terms of conditioning. So um, Jake Gargas, our golf course superintendent, does an incredible job, um, but he just has the course in phenomenal shape this year. I will say that Alan Stevens is from East Texas. She just played a West Texas golf shot <laughs> out of the rough there. Thing rolled all the way through the green. But again, she'll have a, a chip with not much, but a little room to work with. She is lying two behind the green. We've seen a lot of that uh, this week, Greg. The, the f greens are very firm. They're rolling over 13 today on the stint meter. And if you hit a shot out of the rough, um, you need to land it short of the green or it's, it's going to roll out the, the back. And, you know, that's one of the things that makes the co co golf course so difficult is the ball will, you hit a good shot uh, and it rolls four feet over the green, but then you've got a very delicate chip. And um, so that's what's challenging these players and why the scores are as high as they are. Tony, it, it's June, so we're obviously never sure what the weather is going to be like. We played through rain and had some delays the first couple of years. Yesterday, really kind of the first time, at least on day number one, that you couldn't get through the first two rounds. Just your thoughts on the job that the players did, but your course staff did in getting as many holes in yesterday as you could. Yeah, we, we were here till uh, 10 o'clock last night. Uh, really proud of all the team, uh, Jake and his crew. They got here at, I think, 4.30 this morning to get the golf course ready. We had to get... Um, we had to get the entire front nine uh, available by 8 o'clock um, and then six holes on the back. So really a lot goes into it. And, and uh, you know, he's doing so many small things that people don't realize. We cut the greens. We rolled the greens. We raked all the bunkers. He, he rolled the fairways this morning. I mean, just to tell you what kind of level wow. he's taking this to. I think our fairways are rolling about eight and a half or nine on the stem meter today. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, that makes this such a special week for these players. And, uh, people ask me, they say, well, you know, what kind of what's what are you trying to do here with this event? And the way I would characterize it is um, this is a junior tournament. We want we want it to feel like a tour event for junior players. And that's why you see caddies with bibs. You see their names out on the range. Um, you see the golf course prepped the way that it is. Uh, I mean, I feel like we could host the U.S. Open here today and, and uh, we are hosting it in my mind, but <laughs> just for 66 players with that. Again, for, for our generation, the three of us probably have about a 10-year blanket kind of on, on our ages. But to be able to continue on the legacy and imprint what Pete and Alice Dye meant to the sport of golf for players who are age ranged 14 to 18, what does that mean for you? Well, um, you know, that generation just di didn't have the privilege of, of seeing Pete in action and Alice in action, both as players. and and um, uh, their work on golf courses. So for us to be able to kind of uh, introduce them to the dyes, uh, just to maybe a little more intimately with who they were, what this club is, um, what this club meant to them, and you know, the, to see all the flags of the dye courses out on the range, to see the, uh, uh, the quotes around the golf course about Pete and Alice and what they meant to the game. It's just really a, really a cool thing for us and a great way for us to perpetuate the die legacy and what they mean to us here at Crooked Stick. Folks, if you go to diejuniorinvitational.com, it's got everything you would ever need to know about this tournament, um, but also about the history of this golf course. So you can kind of go back and learn about the PGA Championship, BMW Championship, Solheim Cup, college events that have taken place here. Kind of what's coming up next, Tony, for, for this great golf club. Yeah, we're... Uh, uh, maybe in the next week we might have an announcement uh, that, that you'll hear about. So 
Um, we are going to have a future USGA championship. I'm not going to uh, sure. let the cat Jesus. out of the bag, but uh, I won't uh, tweet it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Here's Stevens for her chip. This is a birdie chip. Stopped at the right spot. Did she have the right distance? Outstanding. Again, she was thinking three, but from off the fairway to off the green, take your four and on to hole number one for the soon to be Texas A&M Aggie. Now we've got two lengthy birdie putts coming up here. It'll be Schroeder that will have the first birdie putt. I'm, I'm going to put your college golf knowledge on the spot. How are the North Florida Ospreys doing these days? Really good, really good. They made the national championship this year. And Scott, I just did a podcast last week, and, and I mentioned he's probably one of the best coaches in the country that doesn't get the attention he deserves. Um, he, he's built that program with North Florida kids. Uh, he doesn't. He hasn't always had the best of budgets, and he plays a lot of southeastern golf, and oh, pretty much always a top 40 program. And like I said, they made the national championship this year, and he's a definitely one of the top college golf coaches in the game. So here's Caitlin. She's a verbal to play at the University of Alabama. She finished fourth at the Rolex Tournament of Champions in November. She hit the right speed. You can tell by her reaction she didn't think she did. It's getting better all the time. I was going to say, it's better than <laughs> she thought, but still some work to do as far as her par is concerned. Caitlin was one of the most highly recruited junior players, um, and two of her final uh, choices were Alabama and Clemson, uh, which I, I couldn't go wrong either way with Annabelle at Clemson. Uh, we were really rooting hard for her to ch choose uh, that school, but um, I'm an Alabama grad, so glad to see her playing for Coach Potter next year, or in two years for, How, for Alabama. How's Annabelle doing at Clemson these days? She's doing really well, thank you. Here's Abby. Again, this is a long birdie putt. What do you see in the read here, Mr. Caddy? Well, we've seen this putt a few times. It, this one doesn't break as much as it does from the central part of the green, but you still got to get it out. She didn't get it out far enough. She, too, will have just a little bit of work. She's able to go to school on, on Caitlin's putt coming up here. By the way, the next trio of golfers that we will see, Melanie Walker, Megan Meng, and Kara Heisterkamp. That group started on 14. So for this group on the green, this is the fourth hole they have completed. And they will do so right at about the one hour mark. Again, par putt. Schroeder looking to stay at level par for her four holes today. Opening around 76. Struggled in round number two with an 80. Currently tied for 10th in this 33 player field. Well done. Good putt there. Caitlin's played, I think this is her third time to play. Yep. She's played in all three Dad Juniors and she's finished um, in the top 10 every year, maybe the top five. Uh, uh, she's been close to winning. I expect her to have a really good day today. She's going to be part of a unique group to have played in all three and frankly has the chance to play in a fourth mm -hmm. next summer. So we get another par putt. Abby will be a high school senior in Goodyear, Arizona this coming year. Trying to stay at one over through four. Currently in sole possession of 13th here in the tournament. Just 
just pushed it wide right. She will drop a shot. By the way, at the top of the leaderboard, Taylor Kehoe with a four-shot lead now over a trio of golfers. Macy Pate, Reagan, and Zabilski, and Lee Chin. So, all right, so with that, will that trio will head over to the first tee. And, Tony, I know you have a bazillion things to do, so we'll let you get to it. As always, my friend, thanks for having us. Great to see yeah. you, and congratulations on another fantastic tournament. Thank you. Appreciate you guys being here. I got it. Director of Golf, Tony Pancake, here at Crooked Stick Golf Club in Carmel, our first of many guests that will join us here at our perch above the 18th green today. Greg Regstraw, Lance Wrangler with you, and you see players starting to head their way towards the 18th tee box, that iconic mail pouch tobacco covered bridge that kind of hits a couple of different Indiana icons, that bridge there. Of course, the covered bridges we have largely in the west central part of the state, Park County comes to mind. A lot of those mail patch tobacco barns are now historically protected landmarks, including one in my hometown of Lanesville, Indiana. So every time I see that bridge and that barn, it feels a little bit like home to me. Have we talked about the the box out here in the in the lake? We have not shown the suggestion <laughs> box just that's yet. A, that's one of my favorite things on the golf course. So if you have a, there we go. See, you ask and yes. and and, and uh, shots given. That is the Pete Dye suggestion box. <laughs> if you have a suggestion to how the course can be better, if you want to jump out there and swim, there you go. Yep. The Greens Committee will uh, <laughs> maybe at some point in time get to it. I'm wondering if there's anything in there. <laughs> you think somebody's had to have put something in there You'd at some point in time, right? It might be sitting there for a few years. Right. I'm not sure who's <laughs> checking it. but We should need to ask Tony if he's checked that box lately. This is Megan Meng. Give you the scores for this group. Megan currently at 19 over for the tournament. She's at five over through four holes. So a little further down the leaderboard now with these groups that are starting to roll through. She will be a high school junior this coming year. And the players that usually get to freshmen or Sophomore and high school level have yet to make a college commitment at this point. As that one rolls through the fairway. Heister Camp. She too will be a high school junior this coming year. So on your screen from Westlake, Ohio. Kara 17 over for the tournament. She has three over through four holes today. She carded back-to-back -back 79s. Played that one off to the right, but like the way she hit it, she had the line figured out. Yeah, you can get a little greedy back there. <laughs> Try to take off a little bit more than you can choose sometimes, but obviously she's not going to have a lot in. Here's Melanie Walker. Walker faring the best of this group so far. She is currently at 14 over for the tournament. She is one over for the day. She struggled with an opening around 81, but then backed it up with a four over 76 in round number two. So we're getting back to players that, again, perhaps Melanie can, can be a, a top 10. What's what's kind of the thought process when you're playing this third and final round? You listen, I'm, I'm not going to be in contention for the win. Maybe I can I can sneak a top 10. What are they, caddies, kind of focused on here as they're wrapping up their tournament uh, two days here at Cricket Stick? That's exactly it, Greg. They're, they're trying to leave here with some positive thoughts, uh, some momentum for their next event. A, a top 10 in this field is obviously any, any top f half finish in this type of field is good and you can take a lot away from it and build from it. So that's what they're they're out there grinding on. And, and then obviously junior ranking points are always important and world amateur golf ranking points. So there's always something to play for. Heister Camp with a par on 17. We're showing you all the action 
as each group after they tee off on 18 will show you how they did on 17 to bring you our two-hole coverage here on the ISC Sports Network. This is Walker. And Walker will take a three as well on 17. And you get an idea where a lot of these players are going to play their college golf. I think the hat gives it away for Miss Walker where she's going. Here's Megan Meng. And again, you can see the result, unfortunately, of Megan's tee shot. Kind of saw that just in the, in the swing that she had. This is a bogey putt for Megan that ends up being a fantastic effort. But unfortunately for Megan, a five because of the ball in the water off the tee. Let's show you the leaderboard here. We've got a momentary break in the action. Taylor Kehoe has given one back. The Canadian now at even par for the tournament. Lee Chen has a birdie on her card today, so she has gone from four over to three. Macy Pate, who is playing with Kehoe, is three back. And Reagan Zabilski, that's the final trio, uh, the final group of the day on the girls' side that we will not see till much later. She is at four over par. When you're Lee and you are multiple holes away from playing with the leading group, how does that affect her game, or does it really affect her game today? It doesn't. I mean, obviously she's probably at some point going to want to know the scoreboard and know where she stands, but being the defending champ as well, uh, she's got to feel pretty good about where she can, what she can do out here today. So did I miss Walker's ball going into the yeah, water? or I didn't see it either. Or is she getting relief potentially from... Got a rules official out there to make sure everybody is doing things properly. So Megan Meng, it looks like she'll be first to swing, and she is further back and well off the fairway as well. That's Walker that you see lined up there next to the hazard. Only player to reach the fairway of this group was Heister Camp. Meng next to shoot. See the ball drop there. She was the Randy Wise Open champion last year. Side Hill Lie. She won the Pennsylvania Junior Girls Championship in 2020. And she's trying to get line of sight. If you're in the position of the person directly to her left, what advice are you giving Megan right now? Well, I'm trying to figure out. Is she, which one? Is she all the way? She is basically, at, yes. she is way back. So see, she, this really isn't a difficult shot if she if she just can get it on line coming out of there. It all depends on her line. So we can look, though, it's the ball's above her feet. It's going to make it go left. But if you can... If you can get the club on it, you can run something nicely through that little gap. Well, she made solid but contact. Yeah, she she must not have been yeah. able to get much yeah. on it. Yeah, she's way back in the fairway, but she has left herself a full wedge, and you could play target practice on the back of the green from that distance. So her idea, mm -hmm. full wedge, put it within 5 or 10 feet, get your par in. We've, we've yet to see someone hit a shot in there over that hump and get it close for birdie. Not sure. Here's Walker. Puts that short of the green. Again, that will get some roll. That needs to. 
go hard because that putt is going to have a yes. lot of movement to it. And that is about as lengthy of a putt as you will see the entirety of the day. Melanie Walker from Burke, Virginia. She'll be at Missouri in the fall. She was the 2021 Virginia Girls State Champion. Ms. Walker. Here's Heister Camp. She was a quarter finalist in the 2021 Women's Am. 2021 Ohio Junior Girls Champion. She has the lowest score for a female golfer on five different courses. That's pretty good. Clubhouse bragging rights right there. And this one will just that check up. Now we'll come catch back it. down. It's going to catch it. Oh, gravity is her friend. Yep. This thing will roll for a while. Greg, she's one of those players that when she shows up in a new course and asks what the course record is, she really means it. How about that? Kara has studied some physics in her high school <laughs> days, has she not? Because that ball went from, what, 30 feet away to oh 10 yeah. to 12, that what she's putting at right now. Use a line from Pacers coach Rick Carlisle. It applies to basketball, and for Kara to apply to that shot, knows the geometry of the game. You have to see a birdie made today. Unless this is hold, this won't be a birdie here either. But Megan can put together a solid wedge here. She can give herself a good look at a par putt. Good cut at it. Does she have the right distance? If it just would have bounced about four or five feet more, would have been a good shot. But now she has a difficult par putt to get. Frank the goal from there, two putt, take your bogey, and move on to the first hole. Let's thank our friends at On Demand Staffing, supporting major clients like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Lucas Oil Stadium. On Demand Staffing is your go-to partner when you need staffing help. When you need it, where you need it, call On Demand. Online at ondemandstaffing.jobs or visit one of their two Indianapolis offices located on the west side of Indianapolis, West Washington Street, 2100 block, in the corner of 86th and Michigan Road. Thank you, On Demand Staffing, for your support of today's broadcast. Get alongside Lance Ringler of Golf Week Magazine. My name is Greg Regstraw. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks to our wonderful ISC Sports Network crew. Jordan Shu, Alan Hughes, Sean Walker, Austin Lass. Our great cameramen and women that are working today's event. Because as we have said, we have seven different camera angles to show you over the 17th and 18th holes of this historic and wonderful facility just outside of Indianapolis. Our third year of bringing you this broadcast here on the ISC Sports Network. You always have a special place in your heart when you come to a Pete and Alice Dye golf course, especially here in the state of Indiana. But I will forever be grateful for this event. The first one of these happened in late May of 2020, one of the few live sporting events that took place around that time. For somebody that calls games for a living, it helped me keep my sanity for a few weeks. It, it really was one of the first. Kind of the PGA Tour had just kind of resumed or was about to around that time. So here's Walker. Anything within 5 to 10 feet you feel good about here. It's not going to be bad. 
Plays that huge swing of break. Probably ran that by more than she had hoped. But relatively flat putt, even though it's lengthy. Coming up for her for par. So now it'll be Meng. This will be for par for her. Next group that we will see, Addison Klonowski, Caitlin Huber, Kavia Ajarapu. That group, in fact, is on the 18th tee as we speak, and they are, frankly, free to tee off from 400 yards away. The wind has picked up here in the last 10, 15 minutes quite a bit. It is on this 18th hole, dead behind the players, too. Which means it's kind of a southwesterly breeze would be the alignment. That's going to be pretty good here. We're at the right line in terms of break. Didn't hit enough in terms of distance, putting in a very makeable putt for your five. It does not feel like a southwesterly breeze today. On the group that's on the tee, this is the sixth trio of players that we have seen come to 18. So we are literally halfway through the women's field at this point. An outstanding drive that will find the left edge of the fairway. So as we go back to the green, this is a par putt for Walker. Just a little bit left. Well, frankly, we knew that was not going to be an easy two putt from where she was on the green. No, this, uh, there's just a lot going on on this green, Greg. <laughs> and you would think that that hole location would be one of the easier ones on the green, but it's just, it's not. Here's Heister Camp. She's looking for the first birdie of the day on 18. Just left it out to the right. But par on this course and par in this tournament is never a bad thing. Eister Camp three over through her first four holes. Tap in par for her. Kara currently tied for 19th. Well, Meng has a putt for five. We'll tell you how that wraps up in a moment. Let's go back to 17. And this is the next group up, and that's clearly the best tee shot we've seen on 17 today. Meng did get By her far. five, but unfortunately, a missed birdie putt. So a three. Here's Huber. On the dance floor. A little work to do from that distance. Huber's putt. Left a little short. Huber, by the way, from Gainesville, Florida. She's completed her freshman year of high school. She is an even par for the day through five holes with the par here. Another outstanding tee shot there. This group clearly has figured out how to play that par three. So make it three successive pars 
for that group. And are now making their way to the fairway. Addison Klonowski, Naples, Florida. She'll be a high school senior. She is undecided. Kavia Ajarapu from Lebanon, New Jersey. She will also be a high school senior, so none of this trio will play college golf next year, but only Kavia of this group has decided where she will be playing, and that will be at Ohio State University. Klonowski has played in the U.S. Girls Junior, the Western Junior, and the Western Am in her young golfing career. There are not many days like this in Naples, Florida, from a weather perspective for her. Klonowski two over through five holes today. Digging the old school Nikes, by the way, for yeah. the golf gear. This ball's going to run out nicely. Now Probably we'll, too nicely. I was going to say, will it put on the brakes? Yeah. And again, that's, I wouldn't say a makeable chip, but a potential two putt or two shot chip from there. Rapu. She is even par through her five holes today. She is 60 over for the tournament. She's right in the middle of this 33-player field. She is tied for 16th. See kind of the reaction. Didn't like that resulting swing of the iron, and she is short of the green to her left, our right, as you're watching it on our feed here. Here's Huber. This group has played some very solid golf here as a trio. They're a combined two over through 15 holes played. And for the first ball on the green, though, on their approach is 18. This might have a chance to be it. Yeah, Again, now will the green hold it? No. And unfortunately, if the green holds it, it's going to funnel would have been it. Close. Yeah, it'll, it'll funnel it down to the hole. But and it's also a, a chip where you've got some room to operate in terms of, hey, are you going to chip in from there? Probably not. But can you get two out of there and take your par and, and move on? Yes, you can. She's needs. She's going to need to chip that about three feet. <laughs> well, again, we're about halfway through the girls' field here impressions of the level of golf you've seen so far, Lance? Well, obviously, the um, just by where these players are going to attend college, you can tell that uh, these players are definitely top-tier players. I'm a little surprised that they haven't navigated this hole a little bit better, but once again, there's a lot of nuances to this hole. The tee shot is very, it's, it's the, the, the line you have to take is very difficult on the eye. And then the second shot, the greens are playing very firm. We heard Tony talk about how firm it, it, it has been out here, and it, he talked about this could hold a U.S. Open championship maybe today, and, and I think we're seeing that on the greens. It's very firm and fast, and they're just having trouble with distance control, and uh, we haven't seen a birdie here, and that, that hole location is not real difficult to get to if you can put it on the right tier. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the guys do and what type of shots they have into this hole location here in a little bit. Klonowski. We'll have some time to kind of get a read here. Ajarapu will have the first crack at it. And frankly, I think she's got the most difficult of the three shots. Because again, the length of what her shot has to travel. And she's got room to work with, but where exactly do you stop it in terms of getting the proper roll from there?
76-84. So she was in contention for kind of top five, top ten after round one, but really struggled in round two. Good up. Should get a good roll from there. Yeah, got to sit. So she'll have a lengthy par putt from just off the edge of the green. Huber will go next. You said three feet, spot on. And look at it. Look at that. Still got to pass the hole. Yep. <laughs> it's like you've looped a couple of times around here before. <laughs> a few. Watched a few college tournaments here as well. Big Ten was played here last year, correct? Yes, that sounds right. They moved around a little bit back at another Pete Dye course this year. Klonowski, good touch. Probably would like that a little closer, but again, should be a very makeable par putt from there. to play pretty consistent amongst these groups so far. Average right around 15 minutes a hole. Shapes up to a solid four and a half hour round with 66 golfers in the course. That's pretty solid. Had a shotgun start at 1030 today because of having to finish the second round this morning. Our putt here. Good speed, good line. Just missed a little bit short. So a bogey for the Ohio State Buckeye a year from now. We haven't seen one group putt with the flag stick in, or one player that is. Mm -hmm. Think back to two years ago, you had to. Yeah. It's Klonowski. And there's your four. Well played. Huber trying to. Match that par with one of our own. A little bit of work to do here. And Huber, another par. So she is even par for her day through six holes. The next trio up, and I'm sure Chloe and Faith's mom and dad are happy that they are <laughs> paired together. The Johnsons from Evansville North High School from the IHSAA State Champions. They are going to go play together at Furman University next year. And they are joined by Madison Reemsnyder, who's going to play at Xavier next year. She is from Canton, Ohio. They are making their way back to the 18th green as we speak folks here at the Die Junior Invitational do a great job of getting us as much player information, headshots as we call them in the business so we can kind of identify the golfers. I love the one that they sent us of Chloe. It's when she's playing for Evansville North because there's an Evansville North Husky paw print on her cheek as she is playing in that picture.
scoring perspective. Faith Johnson, 18 over for her day today. Or for the tournament, tournament I should say. That tee shot is up and at him. Reem Schneider is also at 18 over for the tournament. Chloe Johnson at 19 over. Chloe's struggled a bit today, three over for her first three holes. And that group's a little behind in terms of what they've reported from a score standpoint, so we do have hole by hole, hole scoring available here. Reem Schneider on the tee box that absolutely split the fairway. Job well done. Johnson's playing on that Evansville North team, the one of the state champions. She beat Homestead by nearly 20 strokes. And for Chloe and Faith, they were in this tournament a year ago as well. Evansville North has quite the high school girls golf program. Well, Evansville is a great golfing city. The junior program, you know, city courses there are really well done. And this one heading left, significantly left. Well, findable, but uh, not where you want to be. I don't think that's OB over there, is it? No. But that is, uh, that's a long way, too. <laughs> yeah. Because it looks like they're looking past the heather. Our cameras had it. There are fans, parents that are over there. I think there was almost a conversation of, hey, should I hit a provisional? I don't think that's necessary. They're going to start to head this way. Let's show you how this group did on 17. So Reem Snyder will show you first. Good second effort there to head it home for a par. Oh, do we have a different group than we thought we were going to have? Ah, we do have a different group. We identified the wrong group. Sorry about that, guys. Now, this is the first group where we had kind of 12A and 12B, so our apologies on that. So this group is Natalie Yen, Tilly Claggett, and Grace Kilcrease. Sorry about that, folks. So 12 was the first hole that we have kind of run across. This group started on 12. We had two groups playing on that hole. So we'll get to Johnson Johnson and Reem Schneider in the next group off the tee. We're seeing the efforts here. And how about that for a birdie? Well done. Nicely hold. We saw a chip-in birdie, our first putted birdie we have seen through our group through 17 so far. We've got two on the fairway and one about as far left off the fairway as you can, can as you can be, but. Let's face it, it's far better to be over there left than be the other direction right. Be over by the suggestion box if you, if you <laughs> missed the fairway that far in the other direction. Of this group, Natalie Yen from West Lynn, Oregon. Tilly Claggett from the Woodlands, Texas. Grace Kilcrease from Springdale, Arkansas. Natalie just completed her freshman year of high school, so she still has a ways to go in terms of what her college choice is going to be. Other two players in this group are high school, have completed high school. They are on to college next year. Tilly will play at Vanderbilt, while Grace will play 
for the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. That's Tilly Claggett you see on your screen there. It is or Grace. Uh, yep, yeah, that's Claggett. So Claggett that will play at Vandy. Think about the golf program at Vanderbilt University, Lance. Very good. Uh, the women's team this year won their regional, made it to the championship. Didn't fare well, but uh, obviously, uh, year in and year out, one of the one of the top twenty programs in in all of college golf. The men's program there has had one of the best springs I've ever seen in college golf. They lost to one team all year entering the NCAA championship. Uh, and just a tremendous spring season for the men's program, but both programs very solid. Good looking approach shot here. And this will funnel behind the hole. That was close to being one of the yep. better ones we've seen. It just very, very difficult to hold. They really got to land this about uh, maybe almost halfway on, but they got to get it left for them. Claggett finished seventh at the IMG Junior Worlds. Tilly right now tied for 26th. She has two over on her round today. She's trying to break 80 for the first time here in the tournament. 83-80 for two rounds so far. She frankly hit it far enough left where she was out of the heather. That ball will be in the rough. But, again, if she can land the ball in the proper spot, she'll give herself a, a decent par putt on that one. Here's Grace Kilcrease. And then we have players heading to both Tulsa and Oral Roberts that are in this field, so the two Division I universities in Northeast Oklahoma represented in today's broadcast. Play on this left side of the green. This could be good. Uh, I yep. think this will have a good Oh, it just checked up. Will it keep going? Yes, it kind of caught the slope. Still rolling. It's the best approach shot of the day. Fantastic. Best look at birdie we have seen yep. so far from Grace Kilcrease, who she too tried to break 80 for the first time here at the tournament, but is having a great start. She is even through her first five holes. That's the ideal position in the fairway there to play that shot. So we know where you now have to be. So a couple of birdie putts, a lengthy birdie chip. Largely well done by this trio. Kilcrease is tied for 21st at plus 19. Claggett tied for 26th at plus 21. Natalie Yen also at plus 19. Yen one over on her day today. Yen had an opening around 77. But all these golfers have giving themselves a chance to get rounds in the 70s here, their final round for the tournament. Got a sizable age disparity of this group, two soon-to-be college freshmen, another that is a high school sophomore. So let's focus on the one that's a high school sophomore. To be able to play in this level of event when you still have three years before you set foot on a college campus as a scholarship athlete, what does that do for a player like Natalie Yen? It just builds her confidence, continues to, to build the confidence of playing against these, these types of players at that young age. We see so many kids, uh, especially on the, on the girls' side at, at a young age, have the opportunity. And it, it just does nothing but help you prepare because we'll probably see her here the next couple of years as well.
It's not the shot she was hoping to hit. What was she attempting to do there, Lance? Looks like she was, she just wasn't committed to it, I don't believe. I mean, she was scared of, of all the nuances we see. I mean, really, it's it just needed to, to chip it almost a completely different line than where the pin was. And it's almost like a 90-degree shot. Once it hits this bowl, it'll trickle left. But And her lie could have been difficult as well. We couldn't ex exactly see her lie, but she was, definitely was indecisive on that, on that action. Let's tell you about Grace Kilcrease, who is of this group. Here's her yen to putt. It's for birdie. Won't let her in. Just didn't hit it enough. And she will now go one over through six holes today. And you do the math, that's on pace for a 75. Good start. Claggett will have an area code putt for par. You see how much break she's looking at on this putt. I mean, this is Augusta-like putt. You say 16th green? <laughs> yeah. How many times have you made it to Augusta over the years? Just once. Just once. I mean, the one thing in golf I got, Sean. Been there twice. <laughs> I'm going next year, so you'll, ca you'll catch up. <laughs> Good read. Good speed. How about that? Nice putt. I think that might be the best putt of the day we've seen so far. Unfortunately, it comes after a couple of rough shots before it, but it'll be a five for Claggett. That's Chloe Johnson, by the way, that off the tee. We thought this, that was this group. We apologize. Chloe Johnson, Faith Johnson, and Reem Snyder. These are play. These are the players that they're not going to factor in the kind of championship hunt today. There's your five. And these are all soon to be or future Division I golfers. And then maybe a handful of potential pros you are seeing in this field today. Now, here's the birdie putt. That Tulsa logo certainly visible on Grace's cap that she's wearing. Of course, the PGA Championship just in Tulsa a few weeks ago in legendary Southern Hills. I think she makes it, Greg. Be the first one of the day that we have seen at 18. And got it. Well done. Good call by you as well. <laughs> Grace is all smiles as well as she should be. So she is now one under for the day. That little bumper actually up five spots on the leaderboard. So now we get to Reem Snyder and Faith and Chloe Johnson. Reem Snyder is going to play at Xavier next year from Canton, Ohio. Her shot just off the green. Chip leaves her above the hole. A little work to do with her par putt. But drained it. So a three for the soon to be Xavier player. So Chloe Johnson. Kind of floored with that water there. Left herself though a hole high chip for her second shot. And again, she has played this course before. 
and she'll take a par as well. I want to thank Chloe and Faith for wearing different headgear that makes it easier for us to distinguish between the two of them. Faith with a fantastic tee shot on 17. And the birdie effort for her comes up just a bit short for this group with three solid pars heading to 18 and now heading to the 18th fairway. They're getting better on 17. <laughs> Maybe they're watching the broadcast <laughs> elsewhere on the course. And Seeing a lot more pars there than what we saw earlier in the round. Getting a little tutorial. This is the eighth trio of golfers we have seen on the girls' side. We will see two more, <coughs> and then we will get to the boys' field. Basically, the leading three golfers on the boys' side and the girls' side were 1A and 1B when we went shotgun at 1030. So with that, we'll see, in theory, the top three boys' finishers, the penultimate group. Then we will see the top three girls' finishers, Taylor Kehoe leading the girls' side. So you're tuning in for some of the boys' players in this 66-player event, 33 boys, 33 girls. You'll start to see them here in a couple of groups through 17 and 18. So Faith, because she's done that kind of that swale off the fairway, trying to figure out exactly what the line and distance need to be. Let's thank our tremendous ISC Sports Network crew, Jordan Shu, Alan Hughes, Sean Walker, Thanks to Austin Lass, everybody on the camera positions around 17 and 18. A slight spritz of moisture currently in the air. Temperatures cloudy and in the upper 60s, low 70s today. Kind of feels like October more so than June right now. And this one, oh, that's not the direction I think she wanted to hit it, but at the end of the day, may not be too awful bad. Your thoughts about that play there, Lance? Well, it's probably, again, her lie probably dictated that shot, and she just needed to get it up into a position where she can have a nice chip at it and, and try to make a four. And that, that's that's what's difficult about this 18th hole is when you do miss the fairway, the the, the lies, the, the rough is up a little bit, it's a little bit wet, and your, your stance is usually not level. So Chloe's going to have a similar shot here. A little more flat ground from where she is at. Elevated position. Just kind of seeing where she's lining up and kind of where she's looking at with that swing. I think she's got m more of an idea of putting this on kind of the widest part of the green. Let's see if that ball will trickle down towards the flag. Yep, aiming dead middle. Solid contact. Lands front of the green. How much will it roll? Really good shot. Yep. Either way. She has given herself, while not an easy birdie putt, a potentially makeable birdie putt. So here's a look at the leaderboard. And three of the names on there. In fact, the top three names of the board we have yet to see and won't see for a while. Taylor Kehoe at even par. Macy paid at three over. She's one under on the day. Reagan Zabilski, level par for the day. Lee Chin, last year's winner, has given a shot back. She had birdied at one point. She's now at four over. Anna Ritter at six over. And again, Allie Black, who we saw went birdie, birdie to start her round at 16 and 17. She has maintained her footing at nine over par, as she is currently. And a tie for six that you see the top eight golfers in this 33 golfer field. Again, the top three names on the board 
Those are literally the last three golfers we will show you today, and that probably will come around sometime between 2.30 and 3 o'clock. Two players just shy of the green here. Trying to determine where she can land this. She's really got to throw this high in the air if she has any chance of getting it close. Madison Ream Schneider. I go back to the 18th. As the group behind is teeing off. Kayla Headley, local product from here in Carmel. She'll be a high school junior next year. Emerson Blair and Kennedy Adams. The next group back. <laughs> Just one more girls group we will see after the group that is on 18 until we get to the end of our broadcast day. So that's the activity off the 18th tee. Action about to resume here around the 18th green. Faith Johnson. Will it stop? And no. Again, certainly a ball you can try to get up and in there for your five. Emerson Blair. She'll be a high school junior next year from West Point, Mississippi. She is on the tee. Reem Schneider takes her chip around the 18th green. She'll have a relatively flat putt for par, let say 15, 20 feet. I haven't really seen one there. Though. No. I haven't had a chance to go to school on those just yet. Par chip, a par putt, and a birdie putt coming up for this trio. Johnson with victories at the AJGA events in both St. Louis and the York AGGA Junior Champion as well. Didn't have enough in it. Certainly will be a par though. Faith Johnson, two over for the day. That's her sixth hole. It's about 83-79, her first two holes. She'd hope to do better with that on that effort.
Reem Steiner to putt. One over through her first five holes of the day. She too, 83-79. Good effort. How about that? Nice par save. So just a solid round going. Make them putts if you can just get it in the right quadrant. This is the seventh hole for this group. They're a hole behind in terms of scoreboard updating, but on a shotgun start, the turn's kind of a, of a relative term. This is a bogey putt here. Faith two over for the day. Just by the edge. So unfortunately, she'll give up a couple of shots here on 18. We're going to take this quick timeout as this putt goes in. At least I assume it's going to go in. There we go. We'll take a quick timeout. Welcome a special guest when we come back as you're watching the Pete and Alice Dye Junior Invitational here on the ISC Sports Network. Ball here. Harris scores. With 19 seconds Fake players, big boy. I'm telling you right now, that's awesome. I love it. Oh, oh. That's the finish. Oh. You get a layup to take it. And an and one. Your life is on the go. Now your viewing habits can be on the go. With the ISC Sports Network app, your team is at your fingertips. You can download years worth of content from the ISC Sports Network library, high school, college, special events, weekly and monthly shows, wherever you find your favorite app. And you can always find out more information at iscsportsnetwork.com. This is the next group. Clearly you see a shot from what is the drop area off the tee. This is Blair's iron that finds the middle of the fairway. Unfortunately, that means she's going to be lying, be hitting her fourth shot when she gets back to her ball. And we'll see the next two players off the tee. Happy to be joined now up here on the broadcast position by one of the committee members here for this event. Donnie Fletter, John, is joining us. How are you doing today, sir? I am delighted to be here. <laughs> if we can just keep the rain off of us. Forecast looks good. It may not be a sunshine day, but it'll be a largely dry day. Tell us about the role you play here for the tournament. Well, I've been a long member. I'm a, I've been here 52 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an old guy. I had a great experience at Crooked Stick. What was this place like back in 1970 then? Well, let's go back to 1965. Okay. Uh, my dad was one of the founders, and uh, after we gave Pete all the money from 65 guys, he built the nine holes. We're Correct. out of money. He spent it all on the first nine. <laughs> <laughs> so we started scrambling. Michaela Headley shot in the Carmel product. On the green, a lengthy birdie putt, but on the green in two. So Pete went over budget. He definitely went over budget. <laughs> and um, we had about 200 acres. And this is all farmland. So um, they had to sell the real estate around the 200 acres. So this golf course is about 197 acres. Um, and the rest of it was sold into the housing. So you see all this housing around there. I'll never forget my dad came home and said we can buy any lot we want for $10,000. I thought, well, that sounds okay. Well, <laughs> I was working for him. He says, not okay. We're not doing it. So 
uh, they uh, they did raise the money, and Pete Pete finished it off. So this was the f first nine holes. Seeing what this group did back on the 17th hole. Adams, Blair, and Headley, this trio. In terms of what this group has done from a scoring standpoint today, Kayla Headley, currently in 32nd position. She is six over on her day through six holes played. Emerson Blair has a good round going after going 81-84 in the activity of the first two rounds. She has one over through six holes today. And Kennedy Adams is one under on her round today through six holes after going 81 and 85 so far for the tournament. At what point in time in Crooked Sticks history did everybody kind of feel like, hey, we've made it. This is going to be a successful golf course and golf club for generations to come. Well, the first, the first tournament we had was the U.S. Junior way back. Uh, I can't tell you when. But we've now uh, had like eight national events here. Uh, um, it's, it's just more about Pete and Alice Dye, what they did. I'm sorry you guys didn't get to know them. <laughs> yeah. Really, they were incredible people. I am fortunate enough I had a chance to meet them in, in the last 10 to 15 years, but I obviously never had a chance to spend an enormous amount of time you yeah. know, with, with, with either one of them. To be able to have kind of their legacy attached to a junior event like this, what does that mean for the membership? Well, it means a lot, and really a lot. And um, we've done, this is the third year for us, and it gets better every year. And it's, we're getting um, lots of people wanting to come and play, play in this tournament. So it's definitely holding up Pete and Alice's legacy and Crooked Sticks' legacy. Trio of golfers, by the way, that are on the team now. This is their ninth hole. So they, they started on 10, almost like half the field normally would have. That trio of golfers is... Caroline Tuttle, Sydney Yermish, and Lydia Swan. We go back to 18. Partner, we may have just yep. seen the best ship we've seen all day. We have. <laughs> <laughs> They're starting to figure it out. Again, this group is Emerson Blair, Michaela Headley, and Kennedy Adams. Donnie, what else would you like for those that are watching this broadcast from anywhere in the world to know about this special place, Crooked Stick Golf Club? Well, that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> Except that golf is such a wonderful event, a wonderful thing, and these kids are all investing in that, and they're, they're not just for two years or five years, they're gonna do this their entire life at some level. And uh, we really hold that up at Crooked Step. Golf, what it means uh, is, our bylaw. I mean, that's that's why the kids are out here. It's Michaela Headley and Carmel. She'll be a high school junior. That is Shane Headley. That is her caddy. Just to the left. What's the aim point here for this birdie effort, Lance? It's, again, you got to get it out for, out to her left quite a bit and let the, let the slope take it. She's a Hamilton County product. She should know this course very well. Not quite. It's going to end up okay, though. Yeah, from the distance standpoint, yep. she's got it. And she will give herself a very makeable par. But on that line, you can go another 10 feet to their, to their, uh, their left. How much can Emerson Blair, who is next up to putt, how much can she go to school on that putt? Hopefully a lot. Yeah. <laughs> because hopefully she... Uh, I would expect her to, to read this very well after seeing that. That always helps. Blair, much like Michaela, undecided on what her college choice is going to be. She's going to have go. two more years of high school. 
And again, almost identical to the last putt. They just don't realize how much more you can borrow. Yeah. And now what will be a fantastic par opportunity here after that tremendous chip. So three short putts for this group. Tuttle, Yermish, and Swan, the group behind that are approaching their shots in the 18th fairway. That is the last trio of girls players we will see until the final group of the day. And this group and the last group, not going to factor the top 10. We'll kind of work our way up the boys' leaderboard as that group was approaching 17 and on 17 as we speak. NMS. Um. Hate to waste such a good chip. Yeah. So now Michaela with her effort. that one. Putts looked a little better from distance from this group than the ones that have been up close. Kayla finished tied for 21st in the IHSA State Championships this year. Her Carmel team finished 5th. Here's Blair. Just seen two short putts miss from her playing partners, trying to avoid the same fate, and does. Donnie, we'll let you go. Enjoy the yeah, rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining yeah, we're us. We're glad to be here, I'll tell you that. Absolutely. So, Michaela, with still some work to do to wrap up this group. We'll have guests that will join us throughout the course of our broadcast day. Partner, feel like you've been on the air for two hours yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's good. It's getting brighter. Almost like you talk about like at some place like San Diego or Torrey Pines, like we're burning off the marine layer That's here today. That's exactly. There's Yermish. Yermish can play at the University of Michigan in a year. She is from Wynwood, Pennsylvania. She will be a high school senior. Yermish is five over on her round today. Rounds of 82 and 85. And out of a tough lie and tough stance, it's not too bad. Again, she'll have a more difficult chip coming up, but able to advance that ball to next degree. Next up is Caroline Tuttle. Young lady is going to play at the University of Florida. She has two over through seven holes today, trying to have her best round of the tournament, having gone 85 and 81 so far. What sort of golf program is she heading to at the University of Florida? Well, they uh, it's Florida. It's one of the <laughs> right. It's traditionally one of the blue bloods. They've uh, been a little up and down the last few, yeah, ten years or so. But uh, you know, whenever you're Florida, you always have a chance. Now that ball hooked left off that side hill line. 
again, she still has, she'll have a full-length club shot, but from a distance standpoint, some work left to do on what will be her third shot here on the hole. So this is Lydia Swan that we'll show you next from Northeast Pennsylvania. That's not a direction. That's the name of the town. <laughs> Northeast, as in two separate words. We referenced the fact when we had a young lady from Tulsa who birdied here a couple of groups ago that there was a player from or that was heading to Oral Roberts in our field, and here it is. Not only is Oral Roberts in Tulsa, Oral Roberts is literally down the street from Southern Hills. So there's a chance to play that fine golf course, I'm sure, in her upcoming future. And this will make its way to the green. Now how far will it roll? Well done. You know, this has almost had a feeling of, of some Lynx style golf yes. today with the with the weather. Let's kind of yeah. look at it there. So let's go back to how these how this group did on 17. Good run at the flag there. Ran it a little bit by. Just off the green with the tee shot. And the effort on the chip, one that she'd like to have back. Lengthy par putt, though, runs by. And that's a four. Here's Yermish. Her effort on 17. How about that? Outstanding run at the flag. The birdie try. Let's her in. There you go. So Yermish coming in off a par putt. <laughs> her birdie, I should say. And and she's five over through seven. That would be her eighth. She's four over now for her round. So here's Tuttle. What would you estimate the distances from I, I that position? I was just going through that. I'm guessing they're probably about 115, 110-ish okay. there. Just outside of 100 yards to the hole. Again, full club length here. Yeah, just throw it in the air, left of the pin, and hope it catches that little ridge. That's exactly what you tried to do. I mean, left side of the green. Hold it. And she's about, unfortunately, about three or four feet from that being a really good shot. If she literally, that ball is three or four feet to her right, yep. it will just funnel all the way down to the hole. So a lengthy look for a par. And it's Yermish that will have the pitch here. Swan was wearing the long sleeves on the 17th. She's since ditched that here on the 18th. One of those days where you're not really sure if you need you're to in keep between. the jacket yep. on or yep. take it off, put it on. Be a lot of extra gear you'd have to carry if you yes. were caddying today, my friend. She may actually be in the sand. We haven't seen anybody in the sand. Yet they've all managed to stay in the rough. There are some large bunkers around here. It's not the case on 18. They're of the postage stamp variety on this hole. Well, that clearly shows you she was in the sand. Not a bad out from there. Just needed to hit that ball about another 
Oh, five feet to the left. Put on the wrong side of one of those aforementioned elephants you've been talking about. Yeah, that's just a, what we call a chunk and run shot out of the bunker where they just kind of chunk it out and let it run, catch that slope. And I'm interested to see this putt over here. But she's getting ready to. I'm far more interested to see it than actually have to putt it. <laughs> By the way, this is the 10th group of 22 that we will see today. The fellas are already making their way towards the middle of the fairway. So the first of the boys groups to play through. And if you're just joining us, we had a shotgun start today because we had oh, about 60% of the field that didn't finish their second round yesterday. We dealt with about a three hour lightning and storm delay yesterday. Golf played well into the eight o'clock hour, the joy of having this event in June. It's light till about 9.30 on a good night this time of year around here. This is one of those putts that could be uncomfortable because she's got to keep it in the rough for, for probably six, seven feet, and you got to really make yourself do that. Exactly what she did. It's a great read. I'm not sure she could have gotten that ball closer there, partner. It's tough. It just. Now we're seeing a lot, just watching 18 green, we're seeing why the scores are so high out here. I mean, it's just the greens are so firm. And, and what, what Tony say, maybe step meter about 13? Yes. That's tour level. And so it's just, it requires a lot of skill to be able to score. But it's also part of the allure of this event. You are playing a major level course. The MW Championship in 2012 and 2016, PGA Championship 1991, 2005 Solheim Cup host venue. U.S. Senior Open has been played here. It was the Festival of Funk when Freddie won it back here a few years ago. Yermish's putt sails by. Now Swan. How many courses of this magnitude, if you will, for these players that are headed off to play college golf in the near future, as that putt will come up a little bit short, how many courses like this do these players get to play at the Division I level? In, in college? Yeah. <clears throat> Um, well, as you know, Kirk and Six hosted several college tournaments. Yep. Um, it happens. It, I wouldn't say it happens all the time, but it happens occasionally. Um, there's a lot of clubs that open its doors up for, you know, one or two tournaments like this a year here and there. But that's the thing I've always told people about college golf. It's, it's, it's a great mini tour. Yermish for her five. And if you've noticed, Greg, even on the, on the PJ Tour, how many young kids win oh, yeah. quickly? And part of that reasoning is because they're so well prepared at the collegiate level. They they play great, great venues, get against great competition, and a lot of schools invest heavily in their golf programs, and those kids are ready. Of course, College Golf now gets a wonderful platform this time of year on the Golf Channel. And Tuttle. An outstanding putt from distance to give herself this. This is for her five. It connects. Solid stroke by Swan. Knew she hit that moment she had made contact. So 
We will now focus our attention on the fellas for the next 11 groups to run through. This is the first time today you have the feeling there's more sun than clouds out right. here. So this trio of players is Will Hartman, Logan Pacheski, Trace Bracknell. Had a chance to say hello to Trace briefly. They teed off right behind us when our broadcast started. And that iron clearly from a spot where the drive went into the lake. Here's Pacheski. Pacheski from the state of Pennsylvania. He'll play in the Big Ten at Rutgers this coming year. This is where we're probably going to see a little bit different shot trajectories. These balls are going to come in a lot deeper in the green, probably a lot higher. Pacheski going flag hunting from the middle of the fairway. And just didn't get the roll that he had hoped to from that position. So that will make this, I believe... Take a look back at Pacheski. He was eyeballing that the entire way. <laughs> and trying to give it instructions. But while we were doing that. We saw our best shot here. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the ball that was the best target of the day. Coming from the young man that we referenced in Trace Bracknell. He just threw a dart about five feet from the from the hole. I think we're going to see a few of those here now. That was Bracknell. It's Hartman that hit the ball that is nestled up next to the pin. So we've got two on the dance floor and one just off of it. Hartman, a young man from Marvin, North Carolina. He is just going to be a high school sophomore. So since we are just kind of focused on the girls portion of the tournament, Here's the boys. Jay Mendel is the leader. In fact, he is under par for his day. He began the day at five over. Eduardo Derbez Torres from Mexico is currently at six over par. He is even par for the day. Caden Pope is a shot under for the day as well. And then we have a log jam of golfers that are currently at nine under par. Jay Mendel currently with a two-shot lead. And we will see him 10 groups from now. We are working our way up the boys' leaderboard now in the tournament. This group, these guys currently spots 31, 32, and 33 on the field. Pacheski, five over for the day. Bracknell, one over for the day. Hartman, two over for the day. Best round of this group in the first two rounds belonged to Pacheski. He was 79 on his second round. Pacheski, the only three of these, of these golfers that has made a college choice yet. You know, he'll be playing at Rutgers in the fall. Good looking swing. That'll roll past. And it shows you just how delicate the margin is from that angle. Yeah, it's just very difficult. Just very difficult to get it close. So Pacheski.
with a birdie putt, albeit one of some length. Played in last year's Junior Am. Had a couple of runner-up finishes last year on the AJGA Tour. When, well he, judged. when he first hit that, I don't think he thought he hit it enough. <laughs> and now look at it. It's a foot from the hole. That's a par. Well done for the future. Rutgers Scarlet Knight. This is Hartman here. Man won the 4A state title last month in North Carolina for Charlotte Catholic High School. He'll tap that in. Here's Bracknell, young man from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, rated as the seventh best junior boys golf player in the state of Alabama. Young man won the Birmingham qualifier of the U.S. Junior Am a year ago. And makes the birdie putt. Well done. So this group now will move to their back nine. And it's kind of a more conventional start for these guys, having started on 10. With that, we have tee box activity for the next group to come through. You see Philip Dunham, the lefty. He is also the youngest player in the field. He is 14. Big kid for 14 here. A little power, I bet. Has a custom Scotty Cameron putter with his name on it, by the way. He'll get to use that and maybe one more swing. Just rolls through the fairway. Got him from Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. Javier Delgadillo, young man from El Paso, Texas. Going to play at New Mexico State University. Good looking chip on his second effort for Javier. And backs it up with a solid par putt. Ethan Seng, man from Portland, Oregon. He will play in the Big Ten at Northwestern, so he might just sneak in a visit up I-65 while he is here to go check out campus. Pushed his birdie putt just a bit wide. And now, the lefty, who by the way has had his picture taken with the other more famous lefty. That one just didn't hang on. But trying to salvage what he can from the hole. And this is going to roll back on him, unfortunately. So, youngest player in the field on the boys' side. Getting some life lessons on the 17th. 
So unfortunately a five for Mr. Dunham. In terms of where these guys are on the leaderboard. Dunham currently tied for 24th. He's one over through nine on his round. He's shot 81-81 the first two days. Sang is two over on his round. He went 80-81 his first two days. And Delgadillo, two over for the day. 84 and 78 his scores so far. And these players tied for 24th and 28th respectively in the field. You touched on this in the last hole. I want to give you a little more space to kind of expound on that thought. All right. For the girls, they go for about 405 yards. For the guys, you're looking at about like 459, 460. How does this hole play for most of the boys players in the field? It, again, it's it's really difficult because of the, the line off the tee. We've already seen two groups come through here. We have two balls in the water uh, off the tee. And it's just the, the dispersion we're going to see of, of the shots, the wide variety. We're going to have you know many more balls in the water. We're going to have many left. Hard to hit. It's just a really hard fairway to hit because of the way it's shaped. And you really have to have a good line. And for a lot of these kids, I mean, this is probably only their – maybe their fourth time they've played this hole counting a practice round. And so it's just really tough to, to, to commit to a, a shot. And I assume most of them are hitting drivers, but they could be hitting a, a three-wood as well. But it's just it's a difficult line. But once you, if you can get it in the fairway, you, you'll, you're going to see we're going to see some good shots in here from these guys because they're only going to have maybe nine iron in at most, uh, maybe eights mostly wedges in, the, in that range. So we'll see some good shots, some, some approach shots. But, again, the tee shot's very difficult. So iron around the lake. This one, bunker, or in the vicinity. That looks like flat ground from here. It's not. And again, when we say from here, the camera angle you're seeing, we are set up immediately next to that here at Crooked Stick. Again, can't thank Tony Pancake, Eddie White, Chris Worthwine, Sally Worthwine, Martha Falconer, and the rest of the great staff here at Crooked Stick enough. So best looking drive here so far. Javier Delgadillo. Fantastic approach. Thought that would come down the hill a little bit more, but again, you're looking at a good birdie putt for the young man that will play at New Mexico State. All right, if you knew about the North Florida Ospreys, I'm sure you can handle this one. The move from the WAC to Conference USA means what for the New Mexico State University golf program? Well, obviously, it's there's so much movement in, in these in these conferences anymore. Uh, it, it doesn't do a lot in college golf, honestly, Greg. I mean, you're talking one tournament a year, the conference championship. Most of these teams play all over the country. or, or, or You're not really playing conference golf until your conference sure. championship. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, they all are playing to win their conference, so it's, it's definitely something that uh, it, it probably a little bit tougher conference, actually, for them, you know, overall. I can't keep up with them. I love how you said obviously. That's obvious to you because <laughs> know, you're the mayor of college golf. Right. Not it's, obvious to the rest of us. It, it's difficult to keep up with. I mean, there's so much there's so much movement going on. But playing in the conference, you know, for a lot of – especially a lot of the mid-majors, it doesn't really matter much. So once again, thank our friends at On Demand Staffing. They are presenting our coverage today on the ISC Sports Network. And those of you watching in Michigan and Comcast 900, Comcast 81 here in the state of Indiana, supporting major clients like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Lucas Oil Stadium, on-demand staffing is your go-to partner when you need staffing help. When you need it, where you meet, need it, call on-demand. On-demandstaffing.jobs or visit one of their two Indianapolis offices 
on the west side on the 2100 block of West Washington Street on the northwest side, 86th and Michigan Road. Having fun? Absolutely. Good. In terms of the, the weather is just tremendous right now. My partner Lance Ringler of Golf Week magazine. There are times that I'm broadcasting events he's a part of in the high school basketball season as a high school basketball official in the state of Indiana. Somehow he drew my high school in the, <laughs> in the postseason tournament this year. I the, did. The Mighty Lanesville Eagles. I'm hoping we get the chance someday to go over to the table and put on a headset, explain a rule so everyone can quit yelling. <laughs> we, we, we can do that. Anytime I've got you, I'll, I'll pull up a third headset. You can jump on, Pereira. Have at it. We see that all the time in the NBA now. This is going to be really good. Fantastic chip. Get a little roll by, but you, you couldn't have thrown it any better from that spot. That's Seng. What sort of program is he joining at Northwestern? Well, it's, the Wildcats have typically been a top 40 type team, NCAA regional team every year. Um, you know, a couple of really good coaches, Pat Goss, the director of golf, and David Inglis, now the head coach. Um, it's just a solid program. Dunham's chip left a little short. I asked you this question about a young lady who was going to be a high school sophomore. This kid's going to be a high school freshman. Crazy. To play at this level at this age means what for him going forward? I, again, I, sometimes it's hard for people, it's hard to fathom that how good they are at, at that young of an age, um, and what they've done to get to that point is what's even more impressive. And again, you mentioned it immediately. That young man was gifted with the um, with size. Right. In other words, he's going to generate a lot of club head yes. speed. And really, anymore, I mean, you see a lot of coaches out here recruiting today, and they look for speed. Speed's something you can't really teach, and if you have speed, it's it's just everything. Looks like Dunham's going to be first in line to putt here. It's already qualified for this year's Junior Am, by the way, as Phillip. time from a read perspective. I want to thank all of you joining us on the ISC Sports Network. This broadcast available on Twitter, YouTube, Xbox, Twitch, Roku. As I tell folks, everything but carrier pigeon, and we are training the birds as we speak. You can hear them. That's the work of our audio engineer, Jordan Shue, right there. Sun had broken through for a while, but wind's picking back up. Cloud cover as well. Dunham just tapped that one. Got it. That's why they give you a putter with your own name on it. <laughs> you putt like that as a 14-year-old, they might be selling putters with your names to other people on them. It's pretty good. Delgadillo finished top 15 at the Western Junior last summer. Finished tied for fourth at the Sergio Garcia, Garcia Junior event in March. About to call Las Cruces, New Mexico home for the next four years. Did he hit enough of it? No. We'll take his four and move to his back nine. What is the front nine for this golf course? Again, folks, we are working our way up the leaderboard. 
here for the boys event. We're going to take you to 17 here in a matter of moments. Sang's offering. Good. Powered that one through. So let's get you to 17. And we have showed you the action on 17, usually a minute or two behind what it has been to keep the focus here on 18. But this group's a little bit behind from a pace standpoint. So this activity is live. They just wanted more live airtime. I can't blame them. Working their <laughs> Q rating. Matthew Broder, Sheldon McKnight, and Jay Brooks is the trio of golfers you are seeing here. Broder is going to play at Oregon. He is going to be a high school senior next year. McKnight is going to play at Middle Tennessee State. He is from the Chattanooga area. Let's go up I-24 to go to Murfreesboro next year. And Jay Brooks is from Boca Raton, Florida. He is a senior to be. And he is going to play at the University of Florida a year from now. That chip runs by. Can we reference kind of the distance difference between the boys and the girls on 18? Let's talk about the difference on 17. 155-yard par 3 to about 195-yard par 3 is the difference. As now we see the boys' trios of players make their way through the golf course. Yeah, and 17, being a par 3 with trouble pretty much everywhere around the green, it, it's just it, it's throwing the wind. That's picked up a little bit here as the day progresses. It's just a very, very difficult tee shot. Brooks of this group, five over for the day. He's 30th right now in the field, went 75-85. Broder of this group, five over for the day, 78-81 for the tournament. Is this putt? Looks dead center, and oh, it does sneak in. It kind of had some Indiana Country Road to it there at the end. Took a left turn and a right turn, but found its way in. Side door. McKnight having by far the best round of the day of this group. He is one over through nine holes today. He is plus 17 for the tournament. Lengthy, but uphill putt here. Does not lost on I me. Mean, there's a young man playing in a hooded sweatshirt as that ball goes in here in early June. Trust me, folks, that's not normally the case at this event. The third playing of the Die Junior Invitational. DieJuniorInvitational.com has more information as to how you can play in this event and potentially future years or learn more about this wonderful course that is the Crooked Stick Golf Club. We had Director of Golf Tony Pancake join us earlier in our coverage. Tony, a University of Alabama grad. How's his daughter Annabelle doing at Clemson from a golfing perspective? She, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how she, she had a couple decent tournaments, I believe, but I, I think she might have been just getting used to college golf a little bit more than anything. It takes a little, sometimes a little bit uh, to get comfortable, but she's, she's a strong player, and I expect to see her doing some big things here in the next few years.
this group. Now we'll head back to the 18th tee. I'll tell you more about these golfers. Matthew Broder from San Diego will play at the University of Oregon a year from now. Finished second in last year's IMG Junior Academy World Golf Championship. And he attends Torrey Pines High School. If you go to Torrey Pines High School, you have to be good at golf, right? <laughs> well, you probably play golf, right? <laughs> <laughs> but considering that he's also in this field, yes, he's pretty good. Sheldon McKnight attended the Baylor School in Chattanooga That's and helped lead them to their 20th state championship. Yeah, I was getting ready to tell you, Baylor, that program at Baylor is uh, really good. I know you know these names, but for those watching in our audience, Harris English, Luke List, and recent tour winner, as in like last four or five years, Keith Mitchell, are all alums yep. of the Baylor School in Golf. And if you add current or recent LPGA players from the girls' side, which is equally as good as the Baylor School, they've got five alums yep. currently playing professional golf at the top level in this country. And Jay Brooks of this trio, he finished as the runner-up in the Orange Bowl Invitational in January, which is kind of the first tournament of the year. And the person that beat him, we'll see in a couple of groups, Nicholas Prieto. So for somebody from San Diego or somebody from South Florida, how big of a, whether it, whether it's the weather, whether it's the style of greens, whether it's the, the, the conditions, how big of an adjustment is it to come here and play in the Midwest, or is, is golf golf? Do we make too much of that stuff? No, actually, coming to the Midwest, Greg, is, is probably easier than for someone going to to a, to a part of the country where you have to deal with grain. Uh, the bent grass greens and, and, the, and the turf in this part of the country is easier to get used to coming from Florida or coming from you know, the, the West Coast. Uh, it's the players that go to Florida and have to deal with grain if you've never read grain on, on greens and whatnot. So it's, it's, it's a bigger deal going there than it is coming here. See that iconic mail patch tobacco covered bridge in the background? What do you think these young men in terms of distance on this hole, knowing it's 455 from tee box to green, What's, what's the sort of distance they're hitting here off the tee box? What, what, you know, how far they're wanting to hit it? Yep. It's, again, it all depends on what line you choose and how much you want to take off that corner of the water. Uh, that ball's well left. Yes. Again, much like we saw one of the girls' shots earlier, it's so far left, it's kind of all right. Yeah, they're giving them the safe signal. Yep. But it definitely makes you hit a driver. I mean, they are way back there. <laughs> We're 20 or 30 years removed from this being par 5 territory, this sort of distance. And obviously this course has gone through some changes over the years, again, just to keep it in play for major championships. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Length, you just got to keep adding length, really, what it is. I mean, if you can find another two, 300 yards, that's what it takes. And let's face it, you know, in terms of the scores at the BMW in 2012, 2016, even the U.S. Senior Open, they were significantly under par it's, here. It's incredible, Greg, how, how far these guys can hit it. These kids just can't fathom it. Well, that's one of the biggest things that, that you go play your, your local course or whatnot, and if you're a player that's never seen a player hit it like that, they, you're just shocked. Two fantastic drives. They're in the middle of the fairway. I mean, some of these kids literally hit it 350 at times. <laughs> you know? So that's Brooks. Knight. Looks like it was Broder, the player, that ended up sending that ball to the left. Let's update you on the, uh, let's go back to the 17th. We'll show you some live action here. Our second lefty in the field. This group, by the way, Tristan Wisner, Ryan Ford, the local product, and Alex Long, 
And again, we touched on this maybe a couple of hours ago on the broadcast, but there are two kids from the state of Indiana in the boys' event that are literally playing yesterday and today in between rounds of the Indiana State Tournament. So Ford plays at Cathedral High School. Again, for those outside of our central Indiana viewing area, always a great golf school, great in a lot of different sports on the northeast side of Indianapolis. Uh, Ryan is from just up the road north of here from Westfield, technically. He's going to play at the University of Cincinnati coming up next year. But after he plays 50 or 54 holes over two days here, he'll play 18 holes for his high school team coming up on Thursday with the hope of playing in the state championship also here in Hamilton County at Prairie View down the road next Tuesday and Wednesday. A lot of golf. He's young. He can take it. That's what they do. <laughs> And the same holds true for Aiden Gutierrez from Valparaiso, who's just a sophomore, by the way. So while we're showing you that action, let's kind of tell you where what the top of the leaderboard looks like. Jay Mendel has a three-shot lead over Matt Maloney. Mendel is even on his day. Maloney is two under on his day. He has made up some serious ground in today's round. Camden Smith and Caden Pope are also both eight over for the tournament. Three shots back of Mendel. So what you're looking at here is the action around the 17th green. And again, this trio of golfers, Wisner, Ford, and Long. Players on 18 are just kind of getting to the fairway for their shots. That is the local product. That is Ryan Ford. Headed to Cincinnati. Correct. These are three golfers in this field going to play at UC. So Head the Bearcats are very well represented. Head coach Doug Martin, former PGA Tour player. Does a good job picking Indiana. <laughs> UC does that in a lot of sports, frankly. <laughs> good looking ship by Ford. A little work to do on that par putt, but that was a very tough angle. Ford has won two events on the high school circuit this year. The Highland Invitational and the Concordia Lutheran Invitational. Plays for my buddy Ryan Brammer, the high school coach at Cathedral High School. In fact, he won his sectional by five strokes at Maple Creek over the weekend. And for those of you watching outside of Indiana, the sectional is the opening round of the high school state tournament. By the way, you haven't missed a thing on 18 just yet. Almost a hold chip off the green that time. So par putts coming up for the group that's currently on 17. So we'll update you how those guys did here in a matter of moments. Let's go back to 18. There's a lot of ground to be made up, which is why you see kind of the quick check of the yardage book from that far back. Iron in hand, what do you think he's swinging there, Lance? I'm not sure if he's even can get a yardage where he's at. He's, uh, he's well over 200 yards out there. I'm not really sure what his play is. And this is Matthew Broder, Torrey Pines, California. We'll play at Oregon a year from now. It might feel like he's taking this shot from Oregon. <laughs> it's in that direction, right? 
Well, that frankly is the area in which, like when major events have happened, like the media area yes. has kind of been back there. So it's kind, of, it's kind of an open space that, again, gives him a better lie than, say, the Heather would just off the edge yeah. of the fairway. He's just laying this up. Yep, which is the right play. No, oh, my goodness. Didn't. He has made the green. You know, I did not see that that shot trajectory. Did not trajectory did not look like that was going to get here. By the way, we are dealing with some raindrops coming down for the first time today. Wow, that was that was that was some kind of play right there. So now the more conventional <laughs> approach is coming here. In the middle of the fairway. And this, oh, it's going to back up. It just checked up. <coughs> yeah. Another foot forward. That thing funnels to the hole. Yeah, there's too much spin out of the fairway. I have the same reaction as you do, young man. I thought you had a perfect shot. So McKnight will have a lengthy birdie putt. So here's Brooks. He takes a significant divot trying to hit down on that ball. And again, his the same general area. About five feet more, but the backspin on it pulls it back, and he yeah. will have his work cut out for him there. These guys are going to have to, with the way they're spinning the ball in the fairway, they're going to have to throw it back there at the flag. Let's go back to 17. See the putts. Looks like action is concluded on 17. Like we said, just a little bit of rain. It's more of an annoyance than anything yes. else. It shouldn't be here that long. No. I'm assuming you have every golf weather app known to man, given your coverage of college golf. Keep an eye on them. And alongside Lance Ringler. Greg Rakestraw with you here on the ISC Sports Network. It is absolutely our honor to have... Been a part of this event since day one. And we have not shown you anything on the 16th green, but you know what? We can do that too. Our cameras are everywhere here on the ISC Sports Network. As we have expanded from one hole coverage to, we'll call it two and a half we this year. We might be able to get 10 here too. <laughs> now see, my brain has to handle things in sequential order. <laughs> So this group is Aiden Gutierrez, again, the young man from Valpo we have talked about. Yep. Reed Grazerman and P.J. Maybank is the trio that you are seeing in action here. And clearly, we got three putts close to the hole on 16, judging by the markings you see there. So right now our cameras can show you three different groups working around this facility. The group that you are seeing, this is their 11th hole of the day. They started on six. And this is action currently on 16. When we get back to 18, Broder will be the first to play because he is off the green. So you see him kind of marking off. And is Broder the first young man we have seen playing without a caddy today? Or is his caddy just kind of standing over here to the side? Because he's been kind of checking his own yardage and yeah. toting his own bag. Yeah, he, I think he might might have been might have been walking with his mother, but I yep. think he's pretty much going solo. And it's and you don't have to have a caddy, obviously. I think Ethan Sang was in that same boat a couple of groups ago. This is going to be a fun shot here. His ball must be sitting down. So he's going to try to blast flop it out of here to land it probably just a foot or two on the green, I'm guessing. When you got to go double golf terminology, that's not good. <laughs> blast flop. Perfect. 
absolutely perfect. That's uh, worth really a clap, good. absolutely. Really, really good. We could <laughs> clap for the broadcast booth on shots <laughs> right. like that. That's encouraged. Yeah, he had that thing laid wide open, and he had it. I mean, that's the, the level of commitment on that shot that you have to have to do. So let's acknowledge from the tee, 50 <laughs> yards off the fairway, from 50 yards off the fairway to the back of the green to able to tap it in with your wedge for a four. It's a four. <laughs> Here's the action on the 18th tee box. Wisner, Ford, and Long, the trio. We're back to putting on the 18th, by the way. Brooks sit down with a lengthy putt that we'll get to you on camera in a matter of moments. That's the result of the drive, so edge of the 18th fairway. That is what is left for Brooks for par. And go figure, the guy that was off the green and off the fairway probably ends up with the easiest par putt of this trio. Mm -hmm. God That's bless golf. golf, right? Yep. That's why match play is so much fun, right? Which obviously we now see incorporated at the college level on a significant more of a basis than it was 10, 15 years ago. Absolutely. Speed for McKnight. Mike grew up here. Well done. Okay, so he and Broder each had equal length of par putts here. <laughs> the young man from Tennessee. Right it perfectly. We'll go ahead and mark to get out of the way. Got a pair of lefties in the group that's approaching us. First lefty swing, put it on the fringe of the fairway. This lefty swing will find the other edge of the fairway. You could just kind of see those railroad ties you were talking about there in the background around the 18th T complex. This is a par putt. Knew he missed it as soon as he hit it. So for Brooks, puts him at seven over through 11 holes played. This group started on eight today. There's the tap in for McKnight. And McKnight is even through 11, plus 16 for the tournament. The future Blue Raider at Middle Tennessee State will be a currently tied for 22nd. So again, this group that you just saw has seven holes left to play. And again, I want to commend the players today. They are moving quickly. That group has played now 11 holes in three hours. So to the 17th tee we go. And in this trio that we are seeing, it's Gutierrez, Grazerman, and Maybank. Those players are making their way to the 17th green. Golf course just looks tremendous, doesn't it? It always does here. From a golf perspective, though, the, the weather that we have had lends itself to a very lush course right now. In other words, there has not need to have been a great amount of watering taking place on the golf course so far this year. We've had some hot days, but not crazy hot in, in May or early June. This is kind of the first, and obviously there was significant rain here yesterday during the day, but this has been kind of the first stretch of six or seven days without a significant amount of rain. That television tower you see in the background, by the way, that is the tower for WTHR Channel 13. So if you're using that to kind of 
orientate yourself. That is kind of 96th and ditch. The area you're looking at would be over towards 79th and Township Line Road in Marion County. Those towers, about two and a half miles away from our location here at Cricket Stick. I'm enough of a radio nerd to kind of <laughs> know exactly where those go. So the wonderful scoreboard we have here behind the 18th green and our broadcast location just a little up that berm off to your right. We cannot thank our ISC Sports Network crew enough. Here's a good look at us from the fairway. We're better looking from that distance, yeah, are we? by the way. <laughs> Looks like another tee shot found the penalty area. And as you, I think we only had one of those in, in the girls, and as you said, just it's just much more in play from 50 yards further back. And yeah, this is Wisner, Ford, and Long. And that's Ford, I believe, that is looking yes. at the penalty shot, so to speak. This group a little bit behind in terms of reporting their scores, or at least the scoreboard app kind of picking them up. I'm sure we got a fair indication just how their rounds have gone today. And my goodness, that iron traveled a long way. Again, you see the end result of it. If he can get up and down from there, he'll be able to save his five. Playing partners for Ford, Tristan Wisner will be a senior in high school next year. Will play at the University of Alabama. Alex Long will be a high school uh, junior next year. He is undecided on his college choice. He is from Lakewood Ranch, Florida. That iron finds the middle of the green. It won't get back to the back level. It's a really good shot, though, from where he was. Yep, from that far back in the fairway. And that's potential two-putt territory there. and That's long. So that was Alex that took that shot. So this will be Wisner, then, that is up next. Trying to bring this in from the... The draw from the left side. You see the end result. That is a roller coaster putt that'll be coming up. You putting that from there? Or you he, chipping that from there? I'm gonna guess he he flops this. Okay. I'm gonna guess. It's just you can't really putt it. I don't think you can. By the way, after this group, we have eight more groups to come through. So this group will be the 14th to complete 18. And in years gone by, we've had 11 groups that would be heading to the back of the front nine to finish their day, and 11 groups would be finishing because of the rain delays yesterday. The shotgun start at 10.30. This group began their day on <coughs> seven, so this is the 12th hole they have played. Let's go back to the group that's on 17. So these two groups both have the two Indiana high school golfers that are part of this field.
Gutierrez that is in this group is one under for the day. And he has put himself now into tied for 12th in the tournament. By the way, I see the Cathedral logo on the bag of one Ryan Ford. Or trying to get an angle as to where exactly that this ball should be landed. When we have a common phrase about Indiana weather, you don't like it, wait five minutes. Yes. When the, su when the sun's out, it feels like June. When it's behind the clouds, it feels like October. Ford picked a good landing spot. And again, while it's going to run... 10 or so feet by. It's about as good as he could do from that spot. Yeah, we've seen almost everything today, weather-wise. Now it's hot again. You and I get the joy of being underneath the canopy. At least get out of the direct sunshine. I'm sure when uh, Pete designed this place, he didn't think of the 10th tee being a great broadcast location, but it is perfect. The activity off the tee, we're calling off the monitor. The activity on 17 and 16, same, but from mid fairway on in here at 18, we are, look at this with line of sight. There's your flop shot, you called it. Now will it stop? Oh. All the way to the other side. And frankly, I'm not sure if there was a way to stop that. He'd take it about 50 more feet in the air. <laughs> That's the only way he had to get it way up. It's Wisner from Hartsville, Alabama. is Alex Long. Again from there, fantastic. Putt's a little slower from that side of the green than it is going the other way. So Long had the easiest first ball here on the green and clearly has the easiest second one as well. Putt. Oh my goodness. Clearly he thought he had hit it perfectly. Missed it by about a millimeter. First one went in, the dr went in the drink, so this is his fifth. So unfortunately, Ford gives back a couple here on the 18th. Long. Takes his four and knows he's got six more holes left to go 
Quickly in terms of Ford, how does the mind mindset now shift knowing you've got your high school team event coming up in 48 hours? You know, I would hope that most of these kids, obviously, team golf means so much to players anymore at the collegiate level. Even when you hear the guys talk at the pro level, they talk about the Ryder Cup. So I'm sure he won't have any trouble getting ready to play for his team and his school. And, and I'm sure their hopes of going to the state tournament and, and doing something uh, at that event, I don't think it'll be hard for him. Team golf is special for, for golfers because they don't get to do it a lot. These golfers now to the 18th tee. And I love the fact we have cranked up the tee box <laughs> mic. You get to hear that. That sounded good. It looked even better. It's right in the middle. I see two balls out there. Gutierrez, Grazerman, and Maybank, the trio of golfers that are now making their way towards the 18th fairway. Let's thank our friends at On Demand Staffing. Supporting major clients like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Lucas Oil Stadium. On-demand staffing is your go-to partner when you need staffing help. When you need it, where you need it, call on-demand. Online at ondemandstaffing.jobs or visit one of their two Indianapolis offices on the near west side of 2000 block of West Washington Street in the corner of 86th Street and Michigan Road. Thank you to Shane, Matt, and all the good folks at on-demand staffing. That is the next group that you're about to see heading towards the 17th tee. And again, we said this earlier, but folks, where that water is, that was all sand in the, in the not-too-distant past. It was deep, very deep. A couple of players might have been lost in there over, over the years. This next group this should be the 5A group, and it is. So Carson Brewer, Matt Maloney, and Oakley G. And again, there are still four or five more of the boys' groups to go. However, in this group, Matt Maloney has worked his way into a tie for third. And Maloney is three under par for the day. And there have not been many under par rounds for either gender in this tournament. Take a look. Underneath the hole. Brewer, a high school senior to be at Florida State. This is where he's looking to attend. Maloney will be a high school junior. He is from Virginia. Oakley G in this group will play at the University of Kentucky. Show you how things change in a golf course. There's not a breath of wind here on 18. And you see the flag rippling on 17 right now. I think we got somebody on the 18th fairway that's watching our broadcast as we speak. Maybe. That's the Ohio State assistant coach. <laughs> gave us the thumbs up. Maybe they are going to school in our comments then here on 17 and 18. <laughs> Take a look at this second tee shot for this 
group that started on hole five today. So this is the 13th hole for this group. I believe this is Carson Brewer. Brewer from one of those places that is simply known as a golf town because of the event that is held there, Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. just off the green on 17. So as those guys that will head to the 17th green, we can turn our attention back to the 18th fairway. And the young man you see on your screen there, unfortunately, put his tee shot into the water. So we're almost seeing this one per group. I think we've only had one group. Yeah. And the, the one group that didn't have the player that hit it. The other direction. <laughs> almost to Oregon, right? Broder, who ended up parring. Right. Gutierrez, Grazerman, and Maybank, this trio. Might catch that slope. And this shot, we could have a good-looking shot at 18. From the middle of the fairway, you've got it. About 10 foot for birdie here in front of us. That's Gutierrez with the shot. And our final approach into 18. If he hit enough of it, this is going to be good. Will it stop? Oh, he, oh my oh. goodness. It stopped. Oh. It stopped an inch away from the cup. Oh, that my. Was, that peaked in the hole. I think we're going to have our second birdie of the day at 18, yeah. partner. That actually went, that went down just a bit and popped out. Well, you can deduct one from the scorecard for this group. <laughs> We'll talk more about the golfer that hit that shot coming up in a matter of moments. But let's take a look at our leaderboards. As again, we are getting down to golfers having five and six holes left to play in this event. On the girls' side, Taylor Kehoe had a three-shot lead going into the day, and it is a three-shot lead now. Lee Chen, last year's winner, has now birdied two of her last few holes. And we saw her on the first group that we saw this morning Taylor will be in the last group that we will see today, but the Canadian that's heading to play at Alabama is three shots clear. And again, about five, six holes left to go for this group. Now let's go to the boys' leaderboard. On the boys' side of the ledger, Jay Mendel maintains a two-shot lead. Camden Smith in second. Again, Matt Maloney, who is playing the 17th as we speak, he is in the group that is tied for third currently. That really is a a bunched up leaderboard. If 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 Bindel actually comes back a little yep. bit, we have we have a lot of stuff going on. But he's in control. So here is a look. Let's see if we can get the reaction of him when that thing almost jarred. I'm not sure he knows how good that shot was. <laughs> so that is Reed Grazerman from Boca Raton, Florida. He'll be a high school junior coming up. And I'm not sure Reed's going to need to spend much time. And he's done with his work on 18. There's your three. Well done for him. He is now three under on the day with five holes left to play. Reed is currently tied for 11th. This is P.J. Maybach you're looking at. He'll be a high school senior next year from Sheboygan, Michigan. He has a verbal to play at the University of Oklahoma. And that is perfectly judged. Again, it's going to be 15 feet away at the end, but from the bunker yep. to that point, I'm not sure you can do that any better. That was nice. 
had a good angle and kept it low and it's got two different shoes on I believe so I couldn't pull that off I don't have that level of style if I did that I would do it unintentionally let's put it that way <laughs> so Aiden Gutierrez again we've there's the shoe stylings Aiden Gutierrez the other golfer of this group that's currently on the green he plays at Valparaiso High School. He was the youngest player in the field in the Junior Am two years ago. He was eighth in last year's state finals. He was tied for second in the sectional hosted by Valparaiso on Friday. His Vikings won the sectional against rival Chesterton by two shots. And he will play in his regional on Thursday. So he hopes to make another trip to Hamilton County next week for the state championship. Not much in this putt. Read it perfectly. Absolutely. Well done. So that's two birdies for this group. Unfortunately, that'll be it because of the first shot going into the water for Maybank. Gutierrez now is two under on his round. So if one guy in the group plays well, usually it kind of lifts everybody around. And Maybank will tap that home. Job well done by that trio of golfers there. A pair of birdies and nearly an eagle from the fairway here on 18. Let's take you to 17. This is the next group play. So that putt is good. That is Oakley G. The Kentucky polo shirt gives him away. Young man from Carmi, Illinois. You know where Carmi, Illinois is located, I, Lance? I do not. Carmi is just across the Wabash River from what would be Posey County, just west of Evansville. Carmi is about 45 miles from Evansville. Carmi has got about 5,000 people that live in it. In other words, if you're good in golf, like in any sport, colleges will find you as he is heading to play at the University of Kentucky. I've been to Posey County. It's down there a bit. Well, I guarantee it looks just the other, looks just like it. Just the other, other side other of the side. river, where it's in Illinois. This is the group that is awaiting to tee off on 17. So this group is the second group to tee off on hole five today. Nicholas Prieto, that's going to play at the University of South Florida. Benny Long, that's verbal to play at Kansas. And Arav Shaw goes by the nickname of Arrow. And he has one of the more unique stories here. He is playing under the flag of Australia, where his parents have citizenship, but he is from India and was born in India. And he has won junior events in both India and Russia. He's playing here in the States in this event. After the group that you see on the screen, just five more groups left to come through. Good looking swing here. And a good looking result. Certainly a chance at birdie. Just a few feet to the left of the pin. Young Mr. Shaw we talked about. The equivalent of what would be a high school sophomore coming up this year. You want to see the Phil Mickelson slash Bubba Watson influence on golf? Look at the number of left-handers we yeah. have on the boys' side. That's 
going to be a difficult chip. Here's Arrow. Boy, 17's a lot different without that bunker on the left. A lot different looking. I did not think before the broadcast, as that one is left out to the right, what the time difference to India would be from here. I would assume between 10 to 12 hours. So good morning, potentially, to those of you watching us in India, watching Arrow. Here is Maloney. And I got a wonderful note from his Uncle Barry, who lives here in Indianapolis. I would assume Barry's out here walking with Matt. He might not be watching the broadcast today. But Matt's Uncle Barry is the Chief Financial Officer at Wayne Township Schools. Hmm. And again, for those outside of the Indy area, that would be Ben Davis High School, which is the second largest high school in the state of Indiana. Yep. Well, clearly, Matt likes what he did off the tee. Three win. Yep. He's going to have some, some distance to get to the flag, but obviously let me swing in from the fairway. Here's Mr. G. What kind of line do you like here, John? I love hearing the caddy conversation. It's great. What kind of line do you think? It's like over my clubs. You can go up to that. Okay. Hey, Johnny, you've got a big tree. You go toward the other guy's back. Right there. Okay. All right. You see that? Huh? Yeah. This wind's blowing hard left to right. You get okay. in the air, it's going to go left to right. So All right. You can just push there. Cut the middle of the fairway. Really All right. Well, it comes wind down. Wind it's going to be outside. You want to ride where you want it. Okay. Straight below okay. that target's money. Not only a Kentucky polo shirt, but the Kentucky belt yeah. to completely, you know, set off the outfit. And, and you can see that the focal point of that conversation was the line. Yeah. It's 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 such a difficult tee shot to, to figure out where you want to hit it because there's a lot of ways to play it depending on how much you, you want to take off the, the lake. Well, now you know the thought process. Let's see the result. That was a driver, so he definitely going to take a little bit more aggressive line. Yep. And it paid off. Fairway. He'll have himself maybe about as short a distance as we have seen on the guy's side. Here's Carson Brewer. Driver off the tee. And just off the edge, but on level ground and not down on the swaler and the heather that we see to the golfer's left of the 18th fairway. Let's go back to 17. This is Prieto, Long, and Shaw. Prieto is going to golf at the University of South Florida a year from now. He was the winner of the prestigious Orange Bowl event, which is played the first week of January to, to start the year. Finished third last year in the Arnold Palmer Jr. Fifth in the Patrick Reed Jr. And he won the Florida Junior Boys Championship 
by 11 shots. That's pretty good. The guy that finished second is in the group in front of him in Carson Brewer. Brewer's going to be thinking, I came all the way to Indianapolis, and you're still here following me. Just left it a bit, not short, but just couldn't keep that line. Again, cannot thank our ISC Sports Network crew enough. It has been wonderful, the coverage we have provided in terms of one hole the last couple of years. But as a company, we've grown where we can expand a little bit and provide you coverage of the 16th green, the 17th hole as well. And folks, wherever you might be watching from, please let the folks here at the Crooked Stick and the Die Junior Invitational, don't let them know how much you appreciate this level of coverage that you're getting here for this final round today. It's part of what makes this tournament unique. Yeah, it's really good. The lineage of the namesakes of this event, obviously the venue that we're playing at, Part of what makes this event what it is. Arrow Shaw checking the the read here. We're getting down to the final handful of groups. And in this group, Maloney, he's in the group in front of us on 18, but he's in the top three. Shaw taps that one home. He'll now make his way to the 18th. Prieto's got a little cleanup work left to do. Back to 18 we go. These are all second shots you're about to see. This player attacking, trying to bring this in from what would be his left, our right, and did hit that the way he wanted to. At best, that's a par. Could be worse. So that was Maloney. Would like to have that one back. See if it's Brewer or G that is next up. I believe it's going to be Brewer. What's the target point here as he's looking from just off the fairway? Probably us. That's what I'd be. Thankfully, no one's come close to hitting us just <laughs> no. yet. I mean, you got to work it in off that slope. So you've noticed there hasn't been a single ball that's landed right of the pen. No. They all land. I mean, it, really, if you take it probably about 15 yards left of the pen from where they're sitting. There is one reason to aim right of the pin, and that would be your a stroke down on the final hole. That would, that would be the one time you go, okay, let's go for it. You're approaching the final holes, but again, only two groups will say this is the final hole. The two, the two groups that have the top three golfers after two rounds were given the honor, if you will, of starting on the first hole in this shotgun format. Now, will this carry all the way back? Sure did he is. read this perfectly? Yes, it did. What a shot. Again, still has some work to do in terms of a putt or a chip, but in terms of the line, couldn't have played it better. Well, he's got a good little look at birdie from there. Two putt par at worst. So that's Brewer. 
Now Oakley G has his second shot. How's the golf program at Kentucky these days? They A few years ago they had a top 25 program. They've fallen back a little bit. SEC is uh, pretty strong, and, and uh, they uh, – He's, he gets some good players that journey down to Lexington, and looks like this is another one. What would you estimate his distance is from here, Lance? It's got to be in that 150 range. Going right at the flag. Yeah, if he was in the fairway, this might spin. And it yep. will. Absolutely throws the brakes on. And again, that's as good of an approach as that's we have seen throughout most of the day. And that's the difference. If he's in the rough, he, that, that ball's back off the green. But being, being able to hit that ball from the fairway allows him to be aggressive like that and spin it. We've seen several of the guys spin the ball. Just a matter of getting it back to the hole. So G and Brewer have putts they can work with. See some of the staff and volunteers and part of the Die family here checking out all of the activity. You can always tell when it's starting to get late in the day in terms of the round, activity tends to pick up around the 18th green. Around the clubhouse. Maybe about Carson Brewer that's making his way to the green as we speak. Carson again from Ponte Vedra Beach will play at Florida State. We've told you that. But he is currently ranked 39th in the AJGA rankings. In his second at last year's Jack Burke Jr. Invitational. And he finished fifth as in a quarter finalist at last year's Junior Am. Back to the 18th tee box. Here's Prieto. <laughs> Let's see if I agree with his assessment after it lands. If that's sketchy, my game's in trouble. Here's Shaw. Better than he thought. <laughs> He's still got a little work to do in terms of the back of the fairway. This is Long. Benny Long. I'll play at Kansas in a year. How does this hole change for a lefty? Well, not good then in terms of how that one responded. He knew immediately he kind of snap hooked it, but the overall look of this hole from back there being left-handed versus right-handed is what? I would say more kids tend to, with the amount of speed that they hit the ball with these days, the fade is a little bit more. When we were growing up, everybody wanted to hit it right to left. Now it's kind of cool to hit it left to right. So it's just, you know, Maybe being left-handed is a little bit better because you can hit the ball with a little bit of a fade. All right, with that, while we were showing the tee shots on 18, player that was short of the green, not surprisingly, blasted the ball all the way to the back end of the green from there. So we've got two birdie putts and a par putt coming up here. Brewer, Maloney, and G. Keith Brewer. He 
Just the way that ball hopped off his club, he knew immediately put a little too much on that. Yeah, it came out of there hot. Brewer two over on the day. Tied for 15th at 12 over. Here's Maloney. Maloney now in sole possession of second place. Maloney four under on the day. This is his 14th hole. It's a shot back of the leader. Couldn't dial that one in. But right now it's Mendel at five over, Maloney at six. And then a trio of golfers in Prieto, who's in the next group back. Nicholas Gross and Camden Smith at eight over. Maloney has the best round going on the golf course at four under par. And he has some holes in front of him here that the par five coming up, I believe three or two, and then number one's a gettable hole. Yep. So he put a little pressure on Mendel. Here's Oakley G. He's two over on the day. He's currently tied for 13th for the tournament. And he has successfully birdied the 18th hole. Well done. So not enough holes for G and Brewer to kind of have an impact on the championship race. Clearly Maloney is in the mix. Only a shot back. As soon as that, these guys clear the 18th green, the group behind them is ready to go. Oh, unfortunate miss there by Brewer. So here's Maloney. Even at this distance, you're knowing what's at stake. You're sweating every putt at this point. Made that one no problem. So I have a feeling we're going to be talking about Maloney here before the day's over some more. He's gotten through this stretch, 17, 18. He's got some holes in front of him that he can still make some birdies. So Benny Long, this is the drops. This is his third. Long finished sixth at the Shreveport event on the AJGA circuit last year. Had a seventh place finish at the AJGA event at Knollwood last July. It's a good looking shot. Absolutely going flag hunting here. It'll go all the way through. You just can't hold it if you're not in the fairway. Long currently 15 over for the tournament. Tied for 18th. Three over on his round today. Here's Shaw. And Shaw coming in from the right side. Even with the fairway, it will roll yeah, through, but. Surprising. He'll have that for a birdie opportunity from off the green. Shaw six over on the day. Here's Prieto. So Prieto, far and away of this group, has the biggest impact on the end result today. He is two under for the day. And this one will it catch that final slope. 
gets over it. It won't exactly feed it down, but he'll have a pretty straightforward putt for birdie, which could put him two shots out of the lead for him with four holes left to play. And again, these guys have a bit of an advantage because they've already played the tough 17 and 18 with a couple holes. Let's see where they will finish on what, four? Correct. So they have a couple, not a tough stretch in front of them. A lot of pressure on Mendel right now. Once again, let's thank our friends at On Demand Staffing, supporting major clients like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Lucas Oil Stadium. On Demand Staffing is your go-to partner when your staffing needs help. When you need it, where you need it, call On Demand. Online at ondemandstaffing.jobs or visit one of their Indianapolis offices located on the 2800 block of West Washington Street in the corner of 86th and Michigan Road on the northwest side of Indianapolis. How many of your college golfing uh, buddies, contacts, sources are texting you during the course of the broadcast? I've had a couple. <laughs> I've had a couple. I've, Twitter, a couple. If you've walked by, waved in the background, there's a lot of coaches here. I can see why you're the mayor because you are Schefter-like on that phone during the course of the broadcast. <laughs> there are. Yeah, if I don't check my Twitter, it, it, uh, it piles up on me. The Duke coaches out here sent me a note saying they brought in the A-team today. <laughs> so. Well, they saw the van that looks like the A-team van know, in, the, right? in the back of the building. <laughs> Just good to see everybody back out, coaches recruiting, and there was such a long period of time there where no one was allowed to to recruit or go watch players, so it's nice to have that all back. We had this event with really kind of friends and family because the NCAA had, had stopped recruiting, and, and by early June last year, I think coaches had returned, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yep. That was kind of the end of the recruiting dead period in terms of in-person mm -hmm. recruiting. This is long. I would like to get a little more out of that. But as misses go, that's not a terrible one. No. As Jack Nicholas said, it's a game of misses. See if Shaw goes to school on that at all. Kind of similar result. Yeah. It's a lot slower rolling back. Correct. Than what we see coming this way, coming from front to back. There's more slope in it than it looks like, frankly, from our vantage point up here. Same with the camera's vantage point, too. Lining this one up. And currently tied for third. One of four players at eight over par. Two under for his round. So get him within two shots of the lead. Just missed it. Knew it when he hit it. But as we said, 18, a par is never a bad score, and that's what he just picked up. Hasn't officially gotten it yet, but 
It's his marker you see there. But Long will roll it past. Next group is on the 17th green as we speak. That's unfortunate for Long, but again, in terms of the overall outcome, he's not going to be a, a, a difference maker at the top of the leaderboard. Shaw just misses. So an unfortunate five for him, which is a shame because his first two shots were really yeah. solid. That's not easy to read. We've seen four or five players miss that to the left. Prieto makes his par. So he will go to the first tee. Three shots back with four holes to play. But again, his last four holes to play and the man he's chasing, Jay Mendel's last four holes to play, are completely different. In other words, yes. three-shot difference can be had. So the next group behind these gentlemen, Rylan Watherspoon, will play at the University of Cincinnati. Cooper Claycomb will play at the University of Louisville, even though he's a couple of years removed from playing in college. He's only a high school sophomore. And then Josh Ryan will play at Liberty next year. It looks like those golfers are making their way to the 18th tee box as we speak. We'll take a listen to what these guys are thinking about from a uh, strategy standpoint. Once again, thanks for joining us here on the ISC Sports Network. Those of you watching the state of Michigan on Comcast 900, those of you watching in the state of Indiana on Comcast 81. About to begin our fifth hour of coverage today. In terms of what we have left to see of this group. Mike up. Yeah, exactly. There will be three more boys groups to follow this one. And the final girls group yet to go. Watherspoon of this trio and one of the three players that will play at the University of Cincinnati next year. Obviously driver for this young man here. Point and left. Cut. And that will be the rare downhill lie from that position. So 
It's like three wood here. What's your thoughts on, on driver versus three wood from this tee position? Well, three wood's going to leave you probably a lot more in. Um, like I've said all along, it's all about the line, but three woods, it's going to, it's just, I, I would, I'd prefer to see players at driver and be more aggressive. I just think three wood just going to leave you too much in. Oh, come on. Down. The signal was for left. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's. Oh, great cut. Way back there in the rough. So the fairway wide open. Our third young man off the tee. Appears to be the best shot of the three so far. And I would say that confirms it. So one in the fairway of this group. Let's go back to watching this group on 17. Watherspoon, Claycomb, and Ryan. This group started on four, so this is their 15th hole of the day. A common landing spot for those shots. That's certainly an awkward chip, but my goodness, oh, made it look it. easy. I thought you had it too. This will run by for a little bit, left a more than tricky par putt that was missed. There's your four. And your birdie putt there. And then the save for that player. So of this group, Josh Ryan, 200 for the day, eight over for the tournament, currently tied for third. Watherspoon is plus 11 for the tournament, plus two for the day, also through 13. So I don't think that the shots you saw on 17 are included in that score. Take the action on 17 or, or 16 rather. This is the next group on the course. Nicholas Gross, Joseph Lenane, and Nolan Hayes. Nicholas Gross, young man putting, pulls it left, and his name is relatively high up the leaderboard. That could be a misstep for him. He is currently tied for third. There is a log jam of golfers currently three shots back of Mendel at this point. Haynes, plus nine in the tournament, so he's four shots back. Part of an also sizable group. It's tied for seventh. Right now there are 12 golfers within four shots of the lead. So let's show you the leaderboards as they currently stack up. There's the boys group. 
Maloney score. And I think has been updated now. So Mendel's got a two-shot cushion after Maloney bogeyed. We saw here at 18. Let's get to the girls' side of the ledger as well because we'll see the final girls' group coming up. Taylor Kehoe's got a little more breathing room there. Not much change. No. Lee Chen still in second. Has a chance to go 1-2 in this event in back-to-back -back years. And she's eligible to play it two more times. <laughs> so now you're seeing the activity on 18. Got a ball on the front corner of the green. That was the first player that was furthest back on that shot. That would be Claycomb. That's the University of Louisville Cardinal on his shirt. He's the younger brother of yep. Cooper uh, Cannon Clayton. Plays, plays at Alabama, at, right? Yeah, I think he just finished his career up. Really, really good player at Alabama. This shot from down in the swale. It is back to our right. I've not seen a golfer in that area so far today. That will be a dastardly chip from that position. Out of a lone golf from the fairway of this trio. Solid contact. This one is. But. Sent to the right, and you said the it earlier. That's the one. first player we have seen miss right, and that bounces into the drink. So the unfortunate miss there. That'll be Watherspoon. Father Spoon. Right now tied for 13th. Six shots back of our leader. So he'll be chipping a fourth near the green side. You mentioned Cooper Claycomb finished fourth at the Southern Junior Championship in June. Josh Ryan of this group that's going to play at Liberty from Norristown, Pennsylvania. Finished fifth at K.J. Choi's junior event last August. Finished fourth in the Pennsylvania Am Championship last year. And was the winner of the Golf Association of Philadelphia Junior Boys Championship. And at Liberty, the Flames, one of the very best mid-major golf programs that probably not a lot of people know about. They've made the national championship, I think, three of the last four years. Liberty. This shot here is <laughs> really difficult. And that's Josh Ryan on your screen. And you can see him talking to his caddy. He's going, where exactly do I put this? I would say, frankly, you're yeah, almost yeah. aiming just to the right of the pot bunker in front of us and hope that, hopes the, uh, the green takes it. He's got the, he's got, this is another flopper if you want to get it close. He's got to throw it up real high, but he might just be going to go to the right of the bunker and try to let it feed down that swell. Yeah, it looks like he's going to just try to land it just short or just on. I think that's the right play. But again, we have not seen anyone in this spot all day. Yeah, that's not going to get there. Nope. So he'll have a putt, but. Do I need to tell you how fast that putt's going to be? No. <laughs> 
but in Indianapolis terms, that putt could qualify in the back <laughs> row of the Indy 500. That's how fast that putt's going to be. <laughs> that fast going to have some speed to it. So again, Claycomb is safely on the green. He's got a lengthy birdie putt, but he's on the green. Watherspoon now has to figure out exactly, okay, where do I where do I drop here? So he's walking through that equation in his head currently. Spoon from Florence, Kentucky. So the northern Kentucky suburbs of Cincinnati. Young man was our fifth place finisher here last year. Also a winner at the Rome Junior Classic a year ago. So back in play. This will be his chip for par that you see. Looks like Clayton is going to elect to go ahead and putt here. So Watherspoon will wait. Big swing and break. Pretty good read. Good really putt. good read. Fantastic. Again, from that distance, all smiles. Take your par and Go on about your day. For Claycomb. He's been plus six for the day, so he's not going to factor into the kind of the final outcome from a championship standpoint. 15 over for the tournament. Good effort from there. Well, I'd like to have that a little bit closer, but should be pretty makeable. Putt for five there for Rylan. Which will put him at three over on the day. So here's Ryan, and this is for what would be a spectacular four. <laughs> Again, the, the realistic goal, two putt this. He's two under on the day. And this group has three more holes to play after this one. Wasn't bad. No. This still has the lengthiest putt remaining of the group to show you just how hard it is to hit the brakes from that spot. You almost have to stop it at the top of the the ridge there to get it anywhere closer than that. So he will momentarily drop out of a six-way tie for third. It is Mendel at five over. Maloney is at six. Maloney must have made a birdie somewhere. Correct. Got it back. On the par five, I'm guessing. By the way, Grazerman, who we saw go through and Kind of had a nondescript 18th hole. Grazerman is now five over under on his round. Mm. Grazerman is down to two holes left to play. So his group might be amongst, again, in theory, everybody finishes simultaneously today, but his group's moving pretty quickly. So here's Ryan. Needs us to stay in the hunt and does. So he's four shots back of the leader, but in line for a top 10 finish.
Watherspoon for five. No problem there. And now Claycom for. Should be about a routine four. So business concluded for this group here on 18. And we are down to four groups left for us to see. Let's go to 17. See a putt finishing up there on 17. Gross, Lenane, and Haynes, the trio of golfers that are due up next. Should be tapping territory here. And it will be. So those golfers now will make their way towards the 18th tee box. And again, for this group, they are playing their 16th. Speaking of 16, this is actually on the 16th green. This is the next to last boys group on the course. Caden Pope, Jackson Finney, and Camden Smith. So let's go back to the previous group and let's walk you through 17. Gross, Lenane, and Haynes. Joseph Lenane going to play at North Carolina State of this group. He's the only graduated senior. Other two players undecided. Nick Gross will just be a junior in high school next year. Nolan Haynes will be a senior. And I think, Lance, we have seen as many shots miss the green right mm -hmm. on 17 as we have seen actual shots on the dance floor. That has been a very tough green to hit today. It's like a magnet. And, and obviously, your eyes are drawn by the water, say, so, hey, right. go right. But let's face it, we have had times where the wind's been gusting, times where it's not been. How much of some of those well, shots have we seen that have been just because the wind has played a factor? I, I think a, a lot, but I also think because of the front hole location, there's not you, – you, you, we haven't seen any balls pass the hole off the tee, really. Uh, so the miss is, is that short right or pin high right. If the pin – if the hole location was more in the back, I think we'd see more balls, you know, in, in the heart of the green. But it's just such a – precise shot and you don't want to miss it left so the bailout at the last minute is that little flinch to the right. That is a tough miss on that putt. So again, that's the action on 17 as this group gets ready for 18. Let's try to tell you how this group is doing today from a scoring standpoint. Nicholas Gross currently at 9 over. Went over for his day. Same exact score for Nolan Haynes. Nine over for the tournament. One over for his day. And again, just a few drops of rain starting to come down. Changes is, every five minutes. This is Joseph Lenane, who is two over for his day. And ten over for the tournament. He's from Dedham, Massachusetts. Going to play at North Carolina State. How are the Wolfpack in golf these days? Not bad. Uh, they've had some, uh, again, up and down. Uh, had some really good years recently. Lenane 77, 75, and potentially in line to improve that. for it to cut. It means he sent it left. Bring it just off the edge of the fairway. That'll play every time on this hole.
Yep. Right. Smooth swing off the tee. Clearly likes it. And I would too. It'll just get into that intermediate cut. Nothing wrong with that. Here's Nick Gross. So that was Nolan Haynes. You just saw swing the club last time. I want to have thank Nick for having his name on his yardage book. Helps determine what golfer is who out there. And clearly likes that shot as well. So three solid efforts off of the tee box. Tell you about these guys. Nick Gross that has had the last swing of the club there. Downington, Pennsylvania. He'll be a high school junior next year. He won an AJGA event in Bend, Oregon last year. Also was the winner of the Beth Daniel Junior event in Charleston, South Carolina. Young man won the AAA state championship in Pennsylvania this past year as well. And Nick, his current AJGA ranking, fourth. Here's the group behind them on 17. This is live action on 17. And yet again, Hill will bring this back a little bit. But some work left to do. This trio of golfers, Caden Pope, Jackson Finney, Camden Smith. Pope from Lexington, Kentucky will play at Auburn in a year. He's a high school senior to be. Jackson Finney, the third of those golfers we have talked about that's going to play at the University of Cincinnati. And Camden Smith will be a high school senior this year, and he is headed to play at Mississippi State. So two SEC and an ACC golfer represented here. And that's on the green. A potential birdie putt, albeit a lengthy one. Those players are headed towards the 17th green. Players getting ready on 18. And we are thrilled to be joined by P.B. Dye, son of the namesakes of this event, Alice and Pete Dye. P.B., how you doing? I'm doing great. What a great day to be here. Well, we are thrilled that you can be here. And obviously, you literally grew up ar around this place. What's it like to see it uh, in tournament shape today? Oh, they've got a great shape and some great junior players out here. It's just fun to be here. What do you want these players to know about your mom and dad, who are legendary figures in the game of golf, but to you, it's mom and dad. Well, both mom and dad love the game of golf, and they it just it's, it's unfortunate they're not here with us all today, but uh, they're, they're, watch, they're overwatching everything, and I tell you what, they love watching this, whether they're on the planet or not. <laughs> everything about it. I'm sure your crooked stick stories are more unique than most. What can you tell us about this facility that maybe others would not know? Uh, I refuse to answer on grounds that I'll incriminate a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite golfing moment or memory from this place? I actually qualified for the U.S. Amateur here and beat a lot of people about 37 years ago. I think that constitutes a pretty good memory. Yeah, so it... Uh, but uh, it was absolutely a lot of fun growing up here. Started on a tractor and a bulldozer and mowed a lot of greens, mowed a lot of tees, and helped lay all the drainage in this golf course back in 1963-64 when I was 8, 9, and 10 years old. PB where's home for you these days? I spent half of a year in a little place called Urbana, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And the Urbana Country Club's having its 100th anniversary. And 
Some guy named Pete Dye was born there in 1925. <laughs> so that's where we've ended up. We spent a half a year there, then half a year in the Dominican Republic where my dad shipped my little butt down there in 1971. We've been down there for 57 years. Here's Nick Gross. Pretty good golf course down there, too, he did. Dad and I have built 11 golf courses on the island of Hispaniola so far. Iron attacking from the left side of the green. Lands it on the front of the green. It will get a good look and roll here. It won't be an easy birdie putt, but a birdie putt nonetheless. Young man on your screen. Next up to swing will be Nolan Haynes, fella from Barbitson, Ohio. PB, why is it so important to you and the family to have Pete and Alice's name attached to a junior golf event? Well, both mom and dad, you know, started as juniors. I mean, at very young ages. And when my mom started playing golf at a little course here in and Indianapolis, a little nine-hole golf course that, uh, you know, young girls, they were not they were not supposed to play golf. They were supposed to be equestrian or bakers or cookers, this and that. But, and, of course, my dad started playing golf when he was about five. So both of them started as young kids and have supported junior golf their whole life and mom's work with the first tee and all that. And, uh, you know, you got to start sometime, and the earlier the better. Fantastic shot by Nolan Haynes. He'll have a birdie look. Mm -hmm. Nolan is nine over for the tournament. One over for the day. Here's Lenane. He's currently two over on his day. Ten over for the tournament. And tenth on the board. And Lenane knew that was bad when he left his club. Then again, it's it's not terrible, but he will have his work cut out for him. In terms of of the courses. Is, is this your favorite of the family design, or is there another one that you would point to? Well, you got to think about Teeth the Dog down there because the weather's perfect 350 days a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a lot of fun here at Crooked Stick. By the way, I love the suggestion box out in the lake. Love that touch on this place. Joe Lewigs, one of the great, great characters here at Herb, at, uh, at Cricket Stick for uh, many, many, many years. And big supporter, you know, part of the USGA. And you get a good look at it out there. Right past the 17th green. By the way, Jay Mendel. Has a bogey on his card, and with that, he and Matt Maloney are now tied for the lead in the boys' event at six over par. So Mendel and Maloney, we saw Maloney a couple of groups ago. He's got a four-under round going. Mendel is one over for his day. He's gone 76-73. He's online for a 73 right now, so with two holes left to go, those guys are currently tied for the lead. PB Buddy will let you go enjoy the rest of the day. It is wonderful to have you here. Congratulations on a great day for you and the family. Thanks for joining us. You guys us. be safe, and congratulations to everybody that's here. You got it. Take yeah. care. PB Die again, son of Pete and Alice Die. As this is clearly, Lance, a big deal for the family to be here, as many of them as possible, to celebrate this day. Absolutely. Good to see you. All right, so with that, we'll get back to the action on the green. Now the question is, what can Mendel do on 17 and 18? And we're about to see him. They're the next group that will get to 17. The players on 17 are now walking towards the 18th green, so the putts have been concluded over at 17. So here's Lenane. Be the first to play of this group because he is not looking at a putt. See Gross at the top of your screen, Haynes there. The focus now. But it's Lenane that will have a chip and a difficult one at that.
He's going to look like, looks like he's going to try to land one maybe four or five feet on with a little bit of spin. The young man won the New England Golf Championship back in the fall. Comprised of 12 golfers, a state from six different New England states. Didn't grab. Nope. It will roll all the way through. I think he expected that to check up a little. So he'll have his work cut out for him. That's what he's looking at for a fourth shot. So now birdie putts coming up here. Nick Gross, three shots back of the lead, currently tied for sixth. 79-73. This is to go even par on the day and get within two of the lead. He didn't think he hit it that well. I would say that's not bad from there. No. Just that, where that hole location is, it's just hard to make a putt outside of about 10 feet. It's just uh, a hard time reading the correct break and getting the speed correct. By the way, Matt Maloney just had an unfortunate double. He's got one hole left to go, but he has two strokes back, so he may need some help. So Mendel was joined for the lead only momentarily. Lemayne, this is for par. Good speed, good effort. Unfortunately, comes in his fourth shot, so he will fall to plus 11, five shots behind the leader. Take another look at this one. Here's Nolan Haynes. Three over 75 in round one. Again, we've seen that misread almost every time. Yeah, it's just one of those holes. I mean, we literally have seen maybe what? One putt outside of 10 feet maybe made here? Correct, right? yep. Maybe just one? And I can tell you that number is the same last year, too. This yeah, is the but final day. It's a good one. So Gross to maintain his par and be three shots off the lead with two holes to play. does so exceedingly well. Now Haynes, a young man that got to go to Augusta National three different years as part of the drive, chip, and putt finals. See how well he learned the ladder coming up here.
Solidly done. So Gross remains at nine over with two holes to play. Mendel is at six. There's the finale for Lenane. Right now the group at eight over, Reed Grazerman, Matt Maloney, Nicholas Prieto, Caden Pope. We have seen all of those golfers other than Pope. And he is in the next group. This is the action over at 17. I think this is the group that we have yet to see today. I think this is it. Yep, that's the leaders group. So this is Mendel, Robert, Roberto, Derbez, Torres. So this is the group that is playing the 18 holes in order. In other words, there are three groups that we have yet to see come through 18. And this group and the girls group behind them will be playing their finishing hole here on 18. So the group that is on 18 is off the tee. So they're approaching their second shots while these players are all hitting their second shots on 17. Mendel, two shots clear of the field. Young man that's going to play at LSU in a year. He's from Lafayette, Louisiana. Good looking roll right there. Also in this group, Jack Roberts. He'll just be a high school sophomore this coming year. And Eduardo Derbez Torres from Mexico will be the equivalent of a high school junior this coming year. The scoring for this group. Mendel at six over. Roberts is at ten over. Same with Derbez Torres. So really this group, it's what Mendel does that will have an impact on the overall championship. Yeah, it's his tournament right now. A couple pars go a long way. There's always the way you feel about 17 and 18, but mm. especially now. Let's get you to 18. Obviously, we've got one player that went in the water here. And in this group is Pope, Finney, and Smith. And another ball in the water. That could be, we've not seen a lot of, of, of birdies. But I can't recall a number bigger than six that we have seen on this hole today. Correct. And right now you're hoping for six from this scenario. And on the green, but that putt will be for six from that distance. And in terms of the leaderboard, this group, Pope is at eight over, two shots back. Finney is at 11, five shots back. Smith is at nine over. This is from shy of the fairway. Ball you're about to see here. So again, that tells me that had to have been three wood off the tee. Player. Yeah.
lot of ground to cover with an iron. It's a turnover. Yep. This will be just shy of the green, but the hope is you can get that up and in for a four from that position. And out of the fairway we go. Even this is pretty far back. You like, I say you like the shot when you're walking it, towards it. Yeah, it's gonna just a, a little too much on it to get that full funnel towards the green. But again, good position to make a four from there. So of this group, Jackson Finney, is just going to play at the University of Cincinnati, St. Louisville. Led his high school team to a second place finish at the Kentucky State Championship. Caden Pope in this group, also a Kentucky native. He is from Lexington. He finished sixth at the Orange Bowl Invitational back in January. Young man had a hole in one at an AJGA event at Penn State a couple of years ago. On his way to a six under 66. I have yet to get that hole in one. <laughs> You and me both. By the way, to round out the trio of these players, Camden Smith, Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. He's going to play at Mississippi State. He won the Circle K Junior Championship last June and finished seventh at Sergio Garcia's event in March. We now have a five-way tie for the lead. Mendel doubly bogeyed 17. I'm assuming our first playoff hole is 18. We're going to find out. <laughs> Grazerman, Maloney, Prieto, Mendel, and Pope. Five-way tie for the lead. See, everybody gets through their final hole. So this is Camden Smith. And this is his third. And last update, he was nine over par for the tournament, one over for the day. What's the line here, Lance? Again, it's it's probably just inside of us. Well, going first from the front of the green. He might have caught it. Let's see if it rolls down here. Is it bad? Not bad at all. So Smith will be second to play.
Or will he? Nope. Like the putt's coming first from further back. And look at the swing on this yeah. one. I like this. Come on, catch it. The ball will start to funnel down. But it will almost finish in the exact same spot as the previous chip did from the front of the green. Jackson Finney on the putt. Here's Smith. This is for birdie. Just a little too much on it. So all three of these golfers have some work left to do. A lot, yeah. of this group. Currently none of them in what is now a four-way tie for first. Grazerman, Maloney, Prieto, and Mendel. And we have seen three of that group already. And it was a long time ago when Grazerman came through. Yeah. <laughs> we in fact he is in the he is in the clubhouse. He is done. He's at he's at eight, so the bar's been set at eight over. A five under 67 today. So here's Finney for par. And makes it. So Finney with his par, he's got one more hole to play. He's three shots back. So now that we have a set target, a little easier to kind of do the math. It's just how many are going to join. Correct. Grazerman in that playoff we're going to have. So Smith next to go. Cam Smith currently at nine over. So he is trying to give himself a chance. If you make this, you have to birdie what would be his final hole the first. By the way, the group behind them is already in the fairway and a miss. So unfortunately, that realistically takes him out of the equation. Drops him back to 10 over par currently puts him in a tie for 10th. We have nine golfers within one shot of the lead. <laughs> so here's Pope. Matt Maloney has finished at plus seven, so he's in the lead. And forget plus eight being the clubhouse lead, Matt Maloney just birdied his final hole. So Maloney's at plus seven, that's the new mark. Maloney at plus seven. So Grazerman was the leader for what, about 10 seconds? Yeah. Plus seven looks good, too, because 18 is not a hole you get one back on. No. We've seen, what, four birdies all day? Pope misses that one. So Pope will also then drop to plus 10. So now... We go right back to the 18th fairway because this is the last boys group of the day. Mendel, Roberts, and Derbez Torres. That is not one of our leaders, by the way, just, just to point out. But this is his house. He can do what he wants to. So, again, in the clubhouse, Maloney at plus seven. 
Grazerman at plus eight. Mendel, part of this group at plus eight. Pretty shot. good shot to run towards from that swale. I think that is forever known as the Sergio Garcia hit and hope right there, right? That's not bad. That's so fantastic from that position. It's a putt that can be made. Roberts is at, at uh, plus 10. Same with Derbez Torres at plus 10. So Mendel is the one that has the opportunity. Have to go flag hunting here on this, your final hole. And that one's going to be awfully difficult. It's about five feet to ten feet away from being a fantastic shot. That will be a nearly impossible putt to hole from that position. It'll be fun to watch from here. Approach. So we've got two on the green and one just off of it for our final boys group of the day. So let's set the stage now. Again, here is the updated boys leaderboard. And again, because of the shotgun format, a couple of the two most important shots of the day happen on the other side of the golf course. Matt Maloney at plus seven is in. Reed Grazerman plus eight is in. Prieto is still on the course at plus eight. Mendel is right in front of us at plus eight. And really, it's those four golfers because with Maloney finished at plus seven, Ryan, Gross, Haynes, and Smith can't do enough to catch up with a hole left to play. No, it's just a matter of one of these guys at our eight if they can actually get it to seven. Now let's show you the girls' leaderboarding, and we will see the girls' leaders coming up. And frankly, it doesn't look like it would take something calamitous for Taylor Kehoe at this point. She really has maintained a three-shot lead for the entirety of this round. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think we saw it. Did we see it get to two for a moment maybe? But it's been three three to four almost the entire day. And Kehoe, Zabilski, and Pate, the golfers that are first, fourth, and fifth, those are the three that we will be seeing in the next group. Anna Ritter and Lee Chen were in our first group that we saw of the day who came in at four, five, and six, again, because of our shotgun format. Here's a look at the 17th. This is the final group on the course. We'll check back in on them in a moment. That's the girls' leaders on 18, so that's the girls that we saw start on 18 on 17. Catch up with our girls leaders on the tee box on 18 in a matter of moments. Let's show you the action here. Roberts and Derbez Torres not going to factor in the championship. Good-looking putt from that distance. 
Fantastic putt from that distance. Yeah. Derbez Torres from Mexico. That's Robert you see on your screen there. And that's Mendel. So simply put, he has to make this putt to force a playoff. Prieto is still on the course at eight over par. So he'd have to birdie his last hole. Grazerman has now been listed at nine over, having finished. So he will not be a part of a potential playoff. But for Mendel, this putt has to go in. And he'll leave the flag in. A better end result than he thought it was going to be, but, again, not enough. Just a really tough hole to make putts. That young man led for most of the day, but unfortunately, just a couple of slip-ups down the stretch. He is looking at tied for second. Costly double. Yeah, potentially third, depending on how things play out. And that would be if Prieto can get to seven. Roberts just trying to play quickly and get out of the way. And offers one back to the lake at the end of his day. Fortunately for Roberts, he'll finish with his worst round of the three over the two days. Our final women's group, or ladies group, I should say, is Already to the fairway now. Well done by Durbez Torres. So Mendel making sure this one goes down. Our scoreboard watch and see what Prieto does on his final hole. So Mendel is in at eight. We get Maloney in at seven. Not a bad week for the young man from the state of Louisiana. So here's our girls' division leader, Taylor Kehoe. And we have shown her on the leaderboard all day. This is our first chance to see her in action on the golf course. Her lead is three with a hole to play. And what was her goal off the tee? Fairway. Put it in the fairway. And this one here just put it on the green. There's a lot of room <laughs> towards the clubhouse. Reagan Zabelski and Macy Pate, the duo playing with her. And Reagan was in this event last year. She'll play at the University of Arkansas next year. Will be native of Springfield, Missouri. Macy Pate of this group will be just a high school junior next year. Make the very front edge of the green, but we'll have some work cut out for. Keo first, Zabilski fourth, Pate currently tied for fifth. 
And that was Pate on that shot. This could be interesting if it has enough speed. Yep. Zabilski was firing away quickly. Well, we were showing you Pate. Look at this. Played it like a backboard, didn't she? As good as it gets. And Zabilski right now is in solo possession of fourth. With that putt, she could get her into a tie for third, depending on what Ritter does. And she is currently playing the 17th. Here's Kehoe. Again, wants to put it on the green. As simple as that. And does it. Again, she'll have a lengthy putt, but she's got some strokes got to work with. She's yep. got a few to work with. Yep. Frankly, three putts. Her goal on this one will be to put this within five feet. And call it a day. Still waiting to get a final from Nicholas Prieto. Once we see his score recorded, we can determine a winner in the boys' division. The girls' division will play out directly in front of you. I want to take this moment to thank our friends at On Demand Staffing, supporting major clients like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Lucas Oil Stadium. On Demand Staffing is your go-to partner when you need staffing help. When you need it where you need it, call On Demand. Online at ondemandstaffing.jobs or visit one of their two Indianapolis offices located on the near west side, 2800 block of West Washington Street and in the corner of 86th and Michigan Road. Some action on 17. And this is the group that started the day 4th, 5th, and 6th. And oh, my goodness. That's just mean. This is Kehoe. Let's tell you about our more than likely winner of this event on the girls' side. Six wins at the AJGA level. She will play at the University of Alabama. What sort of program is she joining? Very good one. They, anytime you win six times on the AJGA, that's, all, that's entering All-American level abilities. And you see clearly the Canadian Junior National Team gear that Taylor is sporting. First, a putt will be paid of this group. By the way, Prieto, unfortunately, doubled his last hole. So the boys' winner will be Matt Maloney from Vienna, Virginia. Congratulations, Matt. I had a feeling he was in pretty good shape walking off this green. I think he walked off this screen at plus six with four to play. Does that sound right? Yes, I think that's exactly right. Here's Pate. How about having 14 birdies in one round? She had that this fall. Good line here. I think Kehoe would settle for that type of putt oh, from yeah. her distance to help win. Peyton will just be a high school junior next year. If she can knock that home, she'll finish tied for fifth. And here is your likely winner getting ready to putt. Her goal to two putt here, but a three putt is frankly okay. And she'll have some work left to do, but she's got some strokes to play with. That's about the easiest putt on the whole green. Kehoe 70, 73. 
and is in line for potentially a 74 or 75. Hang out for a, a few moments here after we are done with play. Try to get an effort to get our both boys and girls winners up here to our broadcast location. By the way, Chen finished with a par. So Kehoe has three putts from here to win. I think she can manage that. She'll need just one. You said that's the easiest putt on the whole green right there. No, Not very many people hit it there, but when they did, they made it. So the soon to be member of the Alabama Crimson Tide will be your winner. We'll have an international winner of this event for the first time. And on the boys' side, we had Australia and Mexico represented. Taylor clearly representing Canada in today's event. So 54 holes will be all that will be required on the boys and girls side this year. That is the third straight year there has not been a playoff hole necessary. And Pate sinks that one to save her part. Closing around 77 for Macy. She was under par in round one, went 71, 77, 77. She'll finish a plus nine. And Reagan Zabelski can try to end this tournament with a birdie. And Anna Ritter bogeyed the last hole. So if Zabelski hits this, solo third place. And we'll do exactly that. Always good to end on a birdie. Yes. But our, many here today. our competitive day of golf has come to an end, and congratulations to our winners. And Taylor Kehoe on the girls' side, Matt Maloney, who, again, because of the format, ended up playing about four or five groups in front of the leader, but finishes simultaneously, ends up winning on the boys' side. Lance, you did a fantastic job today. Kind of overall your thoughts about the level of golf that we saw this afternoon. Well, I remember coming up here the first year of this event and what they did out of the gate just to, to, for a first-time event, the way they stepped up and, and the way this tournament was executed in difficult times as well. Sure. It, it, set the, it set up a foundation for an absolutely fantastic tournament moving forward. And, and Crooked Stick and, and I know Tony Pancake and, and all the people that are involved in this have done a tremendous job of elevating the status of this tournament and it's quickly become probably, I don't know, dare I say, one of the top ten maybe junior tournaments. And for a third-year tournament to get that kind of, uh, to get to that kind of level that quick is just truly amazing. And and I, you know, like I said, if if this was a, if we were a football or basketball event, this, these would all be five-star players for the most part. This is all kids who we're going to be talking, or I'm going to be talking about at least <laughs> in the next few years, <laughs> at the next level. Going to see them at the NCAA championships and. And uh, then there's some young ones here, some young kids here that are uncommitted, which is why we see so many top coaches here. And, and uh, just excellent excellent players on an excellent golf course. It's, this course never disappoints um, all throughout the course, the finishing holes and tremendous shape. And it just, it's, it's just a great, great event they have going here. One more time, let's thank our friends at On Demand Staffing for their support of today's broadcast. Supporting major clients like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and Lucas Oil Stadium. On Demand Staffing is your go-to partner when you need staffing help. When you need it, where you need it, call On Demand. Online at ondemandstaffing.jobs or visit one of their two Indianapolis offices located on the near west side, 2800 block of West Washington Street and on the corner of 86th and Michigan Road on the northwest side of Indianapolis. So many thank yous go out as part of this broadcast. Thank you to Alan Hughes, Jordan Shue, Sean Walker, and the rest of our tremendous camera operators. Again, we had seven of them 
around the 17th and 18th holes today. Also, thank you to Tony Pancake, Eddie White, Sally Worthwine, Chris Worthwine, Martha Falconer, all the great people here at Crooked Stick for having us back for a third consecutive year. And let's thank Mother Nature. She made our job a little more difficult yesterday, but uh, just a few raindrops. And for June 7th, wonderfully moderate weather conditions here on the north side of Indianapolis, Carmel, Indiana, to be precise. A final look at our leaderboards today. Again, our winners, Taylor Kehoe on the girls' side. Flynn finishes plus one. Lee Chen, as a 15-year-old, won this event last year. Finishes second this year. And again, she could come back another couple of years. Of note, Taylor, uh, excuse me, uh, Lee Chen is the only player of the top four that are eligible to return next year for the event. Taylor Kehoe goes to Alabama. Reagan Zabilski goes to Arkansas. Anna Ritter heads off to play at the University of Illinois. On the boys' side, for a brief moment, we had a five-way tie for the lead. I can't believe we didn't have a playoff. We did not, and the crew is rejoicing for that. <laughs> Matt Maloney, plus seven, is your winner. Again, the young man from Virginia, Jay Mendel from Louisiana, finishes at plus eight. Reed Grazerman, as well as Nicholas Gross, finish tie for third at plus nine. And again, uh, I think of that group, several of them could return next year. And congratulations to Aiden Gutierrez. He has the high school state tournament for Valparaiso that he'll resume on Thursday. Best luck to he and the Vikings in that. Partner, you and know, I have known each other for a while. It's the first yeah. time we had a chance to work together. Uh, you just completed a little more than uh, five hours and 15 <laughs> minutes of a live there broadcast. <laughs> you did a great job, Lance. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Again, for Lance Ringler and our entire ISC Sports Network crew, this is Greg Regstraw. Goodbye from Crooked Stick. Thanks for joining us. We hope to do this again 364 days from now. You've been watching the 2022 Die Junior Invitational, the Pete and Alice Die Junior Invitational, right here on the ISC Sports Network.